ancient Indian scriptures and practicing meditation and self-discipline. He's also the founder of the Patanjali Yoga Pee Trust in Haridwar, an institution that does research in the healing powers of yoga and Ayurveda. He's, his educational shows have been broadcast on many Indian and international TV channels. He's also been awarded with an honorary doctorate degree for his contribution towards popularizing the Vedic science of yoga. Baba Ramdev is a yoga guru known for his work in Ayurveda, business, politics, and agriculture. We extend you a very warm welcome this evening. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give him a heart-rendering warm round of applause. It is my absolute pleasure. Ye saubhagya ki baat hai. I will speak a little bit in Hindi as well. Ye saubhagya ki baat hai ki Guruji, Baba Ramdev, Yoga Guru, who has taken revived the thousands of years old tradition of yoga and revived it for us in India and revived it for the world. Today, over the world, International Yoga Day is celebrated. The credit, of course, goes to our Prime Minister, Mr. Modi, but the great mass revival of yoga, where every person in India revived yoga in their lives, is credited to none other than Baba Ramdev. I always say, he is a person who you can ask anyone on the street. Anyone, I mean anyone of the 1.3 billion people in India, and they will know who he is. That is the power of, of his message, of who he is. And we are absolutely fortunate to have him in our midst, encouraging all the women who have gathered here from 100 plus countries over the six days uh, in workshops. This session, particular one, is also being telecast live. Uh, so a lot of people all over India and those who subscribe to that channel in a lot of other countries as well are going to be watching this session and Babaji's message to you live over now. May I now request none other than Swami Ramdev to come and address us. Pranam, Bahan Harbin Aroda Ji se kuch din pehle mulakat hui. I met uh, Mrs. Uh, Harbin Aroda a few days ago and uh, he, she told me that uh, you come in our uh, program. Mera basic background yoga hai. I am basically a yogi and karma yogi. My life for yoga <laughs> and for karma yoga. Main jindagi ke baare mein bahut tarah se sochta hoon. What is the life? What is the reality of life? What is the ultimate goal of our life? 
So do your work with honesty. Work is life. Work is worship. Work is the goal of our life. Work is success. Work is power. This program is based on women power. Work is power. Work is politics. Work, performance, perception. This is politics. If you are a hard worker, if you are a good performer, so you are leader in politics, in corporate, in social field, in spiritual field. I am a yogi and karma yogi. And if you want success in your life, so you will be a yogi or a karma yogi. Maybe bhi ladies ko bada shok rehta hai fit rehne ka. Fit, fitness. You can achieve only through yoga. Yoga is not only a physical exercise. Yoga is also exercise, but yoga is a way for self-healing to self-realization. Yogi is a complete science. Yogi is a medicine for ill person. And yoga is a way of self-realization, of nirvana, mukti. Mujhe log baat tarah se sunte hain, dekhte hain ki Baba Ji ke paas baat power hai. लोग बोलते भी हैं मुझे जो जो मुझे बहुत प्यार करते हैं बाबा जी इज ए पावर योगी बाबा जी है सो मैनी प्रॉस्पेरिटी बाबा जी इज वेरी फेमस मैं कभी ये नहीं चाहता कि मैं कभी फेमस बन जाऊं मैंने कभी नहीं चाहा कि मैं पावर प्रॉस्पेरिटी पाऊं पावर प्रॉस्पेरिटी नेम फेम ऑल टाइप ऑफ प्लेचर and success, these are not my goals. I am doing my work. In morning, daily, I am doing two to three hours yoga. I am karta hu aur unko karata hu. Aur main koi stage performer nahi hu. Bahut si logon ne mujhe performance karni hai. Kya performance karni hai? हम योग करते हैं और जिसको पतला होना हो हमारे साथ कर लेता है कुछ मोटे मोटे यहाँ भी बैठे हैं मैं एक दिन में वन टू टू के जी वेट रिड्यूस करता हूँ आप में से भी ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी फाइव बहुत मेरे बड़े ग्राहक हैं यहाँ मैं लोगों को पतला करता हूँ वेट रिड्यूस करता हूँ मैं लोगों को स्ट्रेस फ्री करता हूँ योग इज ए वे फॉर स्ट्रेस फ्री लाइफ डिजीज फ्री लाइफ ड्रग फ्री लाइफ वायलेंस फ्री लाइफ पावर्टी फ्री लाइफ इंडिया में प्रोग्राम चलते हैं पावर्टी कैस को कैसे रिमूव करना प्रॉस्परिटी बढ़ाओ पावर्टी तो अपना आप रिमूव हो जाएगी मैं एक बात सामान्य परिवार में पैदा हुआ इलिटरेट फैमिली में गवर्नमेंट स्कूल में पढ़ा मैं बाद में गुरुकुल में पढ़ा कोई बिजनेस स्कूल में मैंने स्टडी नहीं की है I had done my study in Gorkhul. 
मैं कभी कोई ऑक्सफोर्ड हार्वर्ड कैम्ब्रिज स्टनफर्ड पता नहीं क्या क्या आई एम आई आई टी लेकिन मैं इन सब की अभी बोलती बंद करने वाला मैं इसलिए ये बोलते थे एक टाई लगाने वाले टाइट जीन्स पहनने वाले यही सब जगह आगे रहते हैं अब हिंदुस्तान ने प्रूव कर दिया है कि बिना टाई पहनने वाले और हिंदी बोलने वाले भी दुनिया हिला सकते हैं और हिंदुस्तान में तो भगवा कपड़ा पहनने वाला और कान में कुंडल पहनने वाला योगी सीएम बन गया और हिंदी बैकग्राउंड से पढ़ा हुआ चाय बेचने वाला का बेटा पीएम बन गया और पूरे दुनिया में डंका बजा दिया भारत वट इज योर सक्सेस वर्क इज योर सक्सेस ऑनेस्ट इज योर सक्सेस और कभी भी ये मत सोचो कि तुमको कौन सपोर्ट कर रहा है किसी से भीख मत मांगो आप भिखारी नहीं हो आपको भगवान ने बहुत बड़ी दौलत दी है दिमाग की यू है एवरी पर्सन है अनलिमिटेड नॉलेज एंड अनलिमिटेड पावर यू यूज योर नॉलेज योर पावर योर स्ट्रेंथ यू है अनलिमिटेड स्किल मुझसे लोग बोलते हैं बाबा जी आप क्या क्या कर सकते हो मैंने कहा मैं क्या नहीं कर सकता ये बताओ मैं अच्छी कुश्ती करना भी जानता हूं या लेडीज हैं आप लोगों से नहीं करना है मैं डिफरेंट प्रकार के खेल भी जानता हूं मैं एग्रीकल्चर हाँ बात अच्छे से जानता हूं खेती मैं बहुत अच्छे से जानता हूं मैनेजमेंट मैं बहुत अच्छे से समझता हूं इकोनॉमिक्स पॉलिटिक्स अभी नहीं कर रहा कोई करना नहीं है बस ये था पॉलिटिक्स में अच्छे लोग आए बुरे लोग हम पर राज नहीं करें करेप्ट पसंद हमको रूल नहीं करें बस इतना ही है मैं जानता हूं मैन्युफैक्चरिंग मैं जानता हूं मार्केटिंग एक मेरे से बोले बाबा आप हीरो हीरोइन से क्यों नहीं मार्केटिंग कराते मैंने कहा बाबा काफी है क्या दिक्कत है ये कोई जरूरी है कि आपको आधे कपड़े पहनने वाली औरत चाहिए आधा कपड़े पहनने वाला बाबा पर्याप्त है हम तो ऐसे ही आधे नंगे रहते <laughs> मैं बात आपको ये कहना चाहता हूं लोग कहते हैं बिजनेस के फंडे बिजनेस फंडे से नहीं चलता बिजनेस चलता है ऑनेस्टी से बिजनेस चलता है ट्रस्ट लॉयल्टी से और जो पतंजलि इस बार हमने दस हजार पांच सौ इकसठ करोड़ और अभी हम मीडिया वाले आगे का आंकड़ा नहीं बताऊंगा लेकिन Within थ्री to फाइव years, Patanjali will be वन lakhs crore. क्योंकि आप लोग बिजनेस से जुड़े हुए बड़े बड़े इंटरप्रीनियर्स हो ये क्या है कुछ नहीं है आप अच्छे से काम करो होगा और हमारा तो our ultimate goal is not business. Charity is our ultimate goal. So our 100% profit for charity. फॉर चैरिटी Our hundred percent profit for charity. I have no single penny. I have no bank account. कुछ भी नहीं है फिर भी कर रहे हैं क्यों करना है बस इसलिए करना है किसी ने पूछा पेड़ों से कि अब तुम ऑक्सीजन क्यों देते हो कभी तुमने मैंगो को पेमेंट किया कि आपने हमको बहुत आम खिलाए हैं लोग थोड़ा तुमको भी पैसा दे देते हैं जब आम मैंगोज ये ट्रीज 
یہ ایئر یہ واٹر یہ آرتھ یہ سارا یا دس ہال ایگزسٹینس سروس کر رہا ہے کس کے لیے سیریٹی کے لیے کوئی ڈیمانڈ نہیں ہے ہم کیوں نہیں کر سکتے میرا ایک ہی مقصد ہے میں ایک بیٹر سوسائٹی کے لیے ایک بیٹر نیشن کے لیے اور الٹیمیٹلی ایک بیٹر ہیومن بینگ بنانے کے لیے میں کیا کر سکتا ہوں اس کے لیے میں کام کرتا ہوں ایک بیٹر ہیومن بینگ کیسے بنے بس اور بیٹر ہیومن بینگ کسی فیکٹری میں نہیں بنتا ہے بیٹر ہیومن بینگ بنانے والی آپ ماتا ہو اس لیے وومین از ناٹ فار می اے گلیمر ہیومین از مدر ہیومین از لائیو گوڈ آن دا ارتھ وومین از لائیو گوڈ آن دا ارتھ میں ماں کا روپ بھگوان کا روپ مانتا ہوں اور ماتر شکتی کو میں اس دھرتی پر سب سے بڑا درجہ دیتا ہوں کیونکہ ماں سے ہی یہ سارا سنسار ہے اس لیے آپ کچھ بھی کر سکتی ہو آپ بزنس کر سکتی ہو بہت اچھا کر سکتی ہو آدمیوں سے زیادہ بہتر کر سکتی ہو کیونکہ آدمی زیادہ تر بے ایمان ہوتے ہیں یہاں جتنے بھی بیٹھے ہو اچھے ہوں گے آپ مین سے زیادہ ویمین بزنس اچھا کر سکتی ہو کیونکہ اس میں پیورٹی ہے آپ پولیٹکس بھی بہت اچھا کر سکتی ہو آپ فیملی کو بہت اچھے سے چلاتی ہی ہو اور آپ کیا نہیں کر سکتی ہو آپ سب کچھ کر سکتی ہو کچھ لوگ بولتے ہیں کہ یہ پوری سوسائٹی زیادہ تر مین ڈومینیٹڈ ہے دس از ناٹ ٹرو کیا ڈومینیٹڈ ہوتا ہے یہ ڈومینیشن والا زمانہ چلا گیا جس کے پاس پاور ہے وہ ڈومینیٹ کرتا ہے اور جو اس پاور کو سمجھ لے وہ ڈومینیٹ کرتا ہے اور ڈومینیٹ کرنا مقصد بھی نہیں ہوتا ہے میں نے کہا نا آپ اپنا کام کیجیے باقی چیزیں آپ All success in our life. This is the byproduct. You do your work. Bas. Apna kaam karo. Work is everything. Mainne to yehi samjha hai. Us work ko support karne ke liye aapko knowledge chahiye, aapko skill chahiye, aapko different prakar ke expertise chahiye, aapko experience chahiye. Thik hai, wo milega na. To kya hai? Bas. Aap ek ऑनेस्ट हार्ड वर्कर बने अच्छे परफॉर्मर बने तो आपकी परसेप्शन भी अपने आप बदलती जाएगी लेडीज के बारे में परसेप्शन बना हुआ है वो बहुत कमजोर होती हैं। भाई ये क्यों बना दिया भाई आप स्ट्रोंग बनो लेडीज के बारे में एक ऐसा डिफरेंट प्रकार के ऐसी होती है वैसी होती है वैसी होती है आप آپ اپنے پرفارمنس سے اپنا پرسیپشن بدل بدل سکتے آپ نے بدلا ہے جیسا مجھے ہربین اروڑا بہن نے بتایا کہ یہاں ون ففٹی کنٹریز سے اس پورے سیمینار میں ہمارے سب ماتائیں آنے والی ہیں میرے کو نا لیڈیز سب دا وومین سب دی زیادہ جمتا نہیں ہے میں تھوڑا ہندی والا دیسی آدمی ہوں میں تھوڑا بہت میں انگریزی کبھی بولتا نہیں میں نے تھوڑا بہت ایسے ٹوٹی پھوٹی تھوڑا بولا کچھ ہمارے فورینر فرینڈ سے ان کے لیے کیونکہ میں تو ایک دم دیسی آدمی ہوں اور میں مطلب ماں کو بہت شردہ رکھتا ہوں میں روز صبح اٹھ کر کے آئے میں سنیاسی میرا کوئی I have no connection with my family. I have no uh, materialistic family, which is family. In the family, there is a husband, a wife, and then there are some children. I have no small family. I have a big family. Whole India is my family and whole world is my family. But 
वहां कोई एक ऐसा एक छोटा फैमिली नहीं है मेरे से एक बोला बाबा जी आपने शादी क्यों नहीं किया मैंने कहा पता नहीं इच्छा ही नहीं हुआ कभी बोले अभी फिर भी क्यों नहीं किया मैंने कहा मैं सब माताओं को माँ के रूप में देखता हूं जिसको माँ के रूप में देखा उससे शादी थोड़ी की जाती फिर भी बोला बाबा जी ये तो करते ही हैं सब तो मैंने कहा मैंने भगवान के साथ शादी कर ली <laughs> मैंने ऐसा देखा कि मेरा भग... जिसने सारी दुनिया की स्त्रियों को बनाया है सारी दुनिया की लेडीज को जिसने बनाया वो भगवान कितना सुंदर होगा सारा सोना चांदी हीरे मोती सारी कायनात ये सारी सृष्टि पूरे ब्रह्मांड का जो हॉल यूनिवर्स का जो क्रिएटर है वो कितना महान हो गया तो उससे हमने प्रेम कर लिया हमारा अफेयर भगवान से हो गया <laughs> तो फिर उससे उससे जब प्रेम हो जाता है तो फिर ये सभी से प्रेम हो जाता है सब उसी के भगवान के ही है भगवान हमारे हैं हम भगवान के हैं तो आज मैं थोड़ी देर के लिए आया था अचानक हमारे संस्कृति में एक शब्द बोला जाता अतिथि जिसकी कोई आने की डेट नहीं हो और फिर भी आ जाए तो हमने बोला मेरा प्रोग्राम चल रहा था मेरा हरिद्वार में छोटे बस वीक प्रोग्राम है ना हरिद्वार रेजिडेंशियल कैंप योगा शिविर योग कैंप तो मैंने हरबीन अरोड़ा बहन से बोला कि यदि मैं दिल्ली में आया तो मैं जरूर यहाँ आऊँगा आज मेरी एक बड़ी इम्पोर्टेंट मीटिंग है दिल्ली में ऐसे कोई सीक्रेट नहीं है लेकिन एक बड़ी मीटिंग है क्योंकि हमारा जो बड़ा फोकस है वो एजुकेशन रिसर्च और गाय के ऊपर है इंडियन ब्रीड का जो इंडिजियस इंडिजियस नस्ल का जो काव है उसके ऊपर हम बड़ा वर्क कर रहे हैं उसी बारे में हमारी एजुकेशन के बारे में एक बड़ी मीटिंग है तो उसके लिए आया था आज तो आप सबसे मिला बहुत अच्छा लगा मैं आपसे दो बात कहूँगा आप सुबह जल्दी उठना जल्दी न उठो तो जब उठो तभी जब जागो तभी सवेरा सुबह उठ करके यू डू डेली योगा प्रैक्टिस इससे आपको बहुत अच्छा होगा आपको हेल्थ वेल्थ अवेयरनेस पीस प्रॉस्पेरिटी सब कुछ मिलेगा सो यू डू डेली योगा एंड थ्रू योग प्रैक्टिस यू कैन अचीव हेल्थ वेल्थ वेलनेस पीस एंड प्रॉस्पेरिटी योग इज ए साइंटिफिक इफेक्टिव एंड सेक्युलर लाइफ स्टाइल योग इज नॉट एन टाइप ऑफ रिलीजन एंड दिस इज वेरी सिंपल यू कैन डू हेयर and now you can do in flight in office in car very simple this is one your practice deep breathing this is called bastrika pranayam breathing exercise is very important for a good health now cancer is increasing very fast stress hypertension so many type of diseases huh? so if you are doing this you can protect you can protect himself from various diseases so this is this is very important exercise if you are completely healthy so you can do one to two minutes और इससे आपको इतनी एनर्जी मिलेगी यू है एनर्जी इन साइड एनर्जी इज नॉट बेस्ड इन आउटसाइड हम हम लोग क्या सोचते हैं एनर्जी इज आउटसाइड प्लेजर इज आउटसाइड ग्लैमर इज आउटसाइड एवरीथिंग इज आउटसाइड मैं आई एम कंप्लीट इन माय सेल्फ मैं अपने आप में पूरा हूं लेकिन मैं तुझ भी न धूरी हूं 
मैं तुझ भी ना धूरा हूं लोग पागलों की तरह ऐसी <laughs> पूरे ही नहीं होते कभी लगता है पति मिल जाएंगे तो पूरे हो जाएंगे बच्चे मिल जाएंगे तो पूरे हो जाएंगे तुम पूरे ही हो <laughs> मैं पूरा हूं <laughs> तुम भी पूरे हो अधूरे नहीं हो कोई भी खुद भी पूरे हो वाइफ भी पूरी है हस्बैंड भी पूरा है सब कुछ पूरा है कुछ अधूरा नहीं है हम अपने भीतर एक अपूर्णता न्यूनता अल्पता अभाव अनुभव करते हैं पूरा होना चाहते अरे सदा पूरे हो तुम हमारे तो वेद वेदांत का उद्घोष पूर्ण मधा पूर्ण मिदम पूर्णात् पूर्ण मदच्य थे पूर्ण से पूर्ण माधा है पूर्ण में वाव शिष्य थे दूसरा दिस इज माई फेमस योग प्रैक्टिस दिस इज कॉल्ड कपाल भातिया तुम्हारी सारी टमी छट जाएगी एकदम स्मार्ट बन जाओगे ये जो हमारे आदेश त्यागी जी की मिसिज बैठी है ना इधर ये पहले बहुत मोटी थी ये योग करके इतनी स्मार्ट हो गई अब इसके हस्बैंड को इसके सामने शर्म आती है <laughs> ये भी इसको बीच में इस आदेश त्यागी को बीच में पैरालिस हो गया था बुरी हालत थी इसकी मैंने कहा तुम मेरा शिष्य होकर के अब पैरालिस से क्यों परेशान है अनुलोम विलोम कर ये अनुलोम विलोम करके ठीक हुआ ये तुम्हारे सामने बैठा है पैरालिस हुआ था इसको दिस इज योग इज नॉट जॉक योग इज नॉट ए ओनली फिजिकल एक्सरसाइज दिस इज वेरी साइंटिफिक तो आप वो दूसरा माइक ये वाला है ये ये क्या करो कोई भी लेडीज नहीं चाहती उसकी टमी इधर दिखे दिस इज वेरी सिंपल एंड वेरी इफेक्टिव फॉर ऑबिसिटी वेरी इफेक्टिव फॉर डायबिटीज फॉर कॉन्स्टिपेशन दिस इज very effective for thyroid problem kapalabhati and another breathing exercise this is ujjayi <laughs> hold karke hold for some time and then close your right nostril and then exhale the breath through your left nostril ye points over the side ye aur ye thyroid क्यों हो जाता है बहुत लेडीज को थायराइड रहता है दिन जिंदगी भर अल्ट्रोक्सिना दिखाती रहती है डिप्रेशन हो जाता है फिर मोटी मोटी हो जाती है अच्छा भी नहीं लगता ये कपाल बात है फिर थोड़ा पेट हल्का हो जाए तो इसको खींच लो थोड़ा घुमाने में तो प्रॉब्लम होगा लेकिन यू कैन डू अनदर ब्रीदिंग एक्सरसाइज दिस इज कॉल्ड अनुलोम विलोम दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर स्ट्रेस फॉर इंसॉमनिया फॉर डिप्रेशन डिप्रेशन इज वेरी कॉमन स्ट्रेस इज वेरी स्ट्रेस तो सभी को है अनुलोम विलोम कोई लोग कहते हैं मेरे को स्ट्रेस नहीं है बोले ये बेकार आदमी इसको स्ट्रेस नहीं स्ट्रेस नाउ बिकम ए फैशन सो यू डू डेली अनुलोम विलोम अभी आप इसको करके एक्सपीरियंस कर सकते हो अभी करोगे ना एकदम शांत हो जाएगा एक नई दुनिया में चले जाओगे हेवन इज हियर आपको खुद एक्सपीरियंस होगा पीस क्या होता है कंसंट्रेशन क्या होता है ये बहुत जबरदस्त है जो करके देखना चाहो वो देख सकते हैं दिस इज वायु मुद्रा दिस इज वेरी गुड फॉर आर्थराइटिस इफ यू आर डूइंग दिस कंटिन्यूसली सो यू कैन क्योर योर हाइपर टेंशन 
you can lap your hypertension medicines hypertension ki dawai bhi chhut jayegi रिलैक्स होकर के कर सकते फाइव मिनट्स देर ऑम सेंटिंग दिस इज ए डिवाइन साउंड फर्स्ट इन हेल्थ द ब्रेथ एंड देन एक्सेल द ब्रेथ विद द साउंड ऑफ ओम एक बार सभी मेरे साथ बोलो ओ को लंबा बोलो ऐसे फिर मैं को बोलो ओ के बाद ऐसे ऐसे थोड़ा तो इसे अपने आप एक वाइब्रेशन होता है मन शांत हो जाता है अपने आप आप इतना भी कर लो दिस इज इन अब योग में तो बहुत तरह के डिफिकल्ट पॉजेज हैं इजी पॉजेज भी हैं जो मोटे मोटे हैं उनको चार पॉजेज खड़े होके करने चाहिए एक तो ऐसे जो साइड का फैट है ना ये आपका कम इधर फैट बढ़ा रहे थे लेडीज को ये किसी किसी को तो पांच पांच किलो बढ़ा रहे थे तो इसको कम करने के लिए ऐसे आप इसको ट्वेंटी फाइव टू फिफ्टी टाइम्स कर सकते एक्सेस फैट मेल्ट हो जाएगा फिर क्रॉस करके जानते हैं सर बहुत अच्छा फिर एक आगे पीछे झुकना है इससे यहां का जो एक्सेस फैट है इधर का जो एक्सेस फैट है ये सब मेल्ट हो जाता है तीन एक्सरसाइज है ट्वेंटी फाइव टू फिफ्टी टाइम्स यू कैन डू डेली है अब देखो फिर ये बहुत मोटे मोटे आदमियों को मुझे देख के बहुत दया आती है ये कैसे चलता है आदमी और लेडीज को देखता हूं तो फिर उनको लगता है हे मेरे भगवान इनको थोड़ा सा ज्ञान दे दो ये थ्री एक्सरसाइज आप खड़े होकर के फिर आप एक एक्सरसाइज बैठ के करते हो उसको ना बहुत इजी है ऐसे बैठ करके और ऐसे ऐसे घुमाना आगे पीछे इसको चक्की चक्की घुमाना कहते हैं पहले तो लेडीज हिंदुस्तान में अपना घर का आटा ऐसे ही पीसा करती थी आजकल पतंज पतंजलि का आटा खाना शुरू कर दिया ऐसे पच्चीस पचास बार घुमा लो लेडीज को ओवरियन कैंसर बहुत कॉमन हो रहा है एंड जेंट्स को प्रोस्टेट कैंसर यू डू डेली कपाल भाती एंड दिस ग्राइंडिंग एक्सरसाइज आपको कभी भी 
आपको कभी भी ए, कैंसर का तो प्रश्न ही नहीं होगा इतना जबरदस्त है अब आप कंप्लीटली हेल्दी हो हाँ सबको आजकल लेडीज को तो नहीं हुआ फॉरेन में तो थोड़ा होने लग गया बाल उड़ने लग गए बहुतों के आंखों पर चश्मा चेहरे पर भी बहुत प्रॉब्लम्स है सर्वांग आसन या शीर्षासन बहुत अच्छे होते हैं बट इफ यू आर सफरिंग फ्रॉम हाई पटेंशन हार्ट प्रॉब्लम हरनिया बैक और एनी टाइप ऑफ पीक गड़बड़ वही दे दे पहले वाला वही लिया अरे वो ठीक है ठीक है वो यही ठीक है ये भी कपाल भाती करने लग गया है जैसे छोटे बच्चे हैं छोटे बच्चों से आप ये करवा सकते हैं छोटे बच्चों को करवाइए उनको दीवार के साथ ना बहुत इजीली कर लेते हैं जो ऐसे कर लेंगे उनको कभी आई ग्लासेस नहीं आएंगे हेयर्स अच्छे रहेंगे चेहरे पर आपको कोई कॉस्मेटिक नहीं लगाना पड़ेगा आजकल पहले फाउंडेशन और फिर ऊपर से लीपा पोती करते रहते हैं ये ये डेली करो जबरदस्त है लेडीज भी कर सकती हैं थ्री डेज फाइव डेज जो पीरियड का टाइम होता है उसको छोड़ करके सभी कर सकती हैं शुरू में दीवार के साथ करो इससे चेहरे पर ऐसा ग्लो रहता है आ कपाल भाती करने से हीमोग्लोबिन बहुत अच्छा रहता है माई हीमोग्लोबिन एज सेवनटीन पॉइंट फाइव एंड दिस इज लास्ट ट्वेंटी इयर्स ऐसे ही रहता है और मैं साल में एक से दो बार ब्लड डोनेट करता हूं वैसे लेडीज का तो हर मंथली में ब्लड डोनेट हो जाता है अपने आप तो तुमको तो जरूरी है कपाल भाती ऐसे तुम्हारा हीमोग्लोबिन ने तो कमजोरी कमजोरी चिल्लाती रहती है ये क्या करो बाकी ऐसे मैं तो सिखाता ही रहता हूं आप लोग मेरे यूट्यूब पर प्रोग्राम देखते रहते हो हा? मैं कैंप भी करता हूं सुबह फोर टू एट मेरा डेली योग रहता है लोग कहते हैं आई एम वेरी बिजी आई हैव नो टाइम फॉर योगा अरे भैया तू बिजी है तो तेरा बाबा तेरे से लाख गुना बिजी है जब मेरे पास टाइम है तो तेरे पास क्यों नहीं है ये तो हमें अपनी प्रायोरिटीज तय करनी पड़ेंगी वाट इज माई प्रायोरिटी हेल्थ इज माई फर्स्ट प्रायोरिटी If I am healthy, I can do everything. And if I am not healthy, I cannot do anything. So health is first priority. If you are healthy, you can achieve. Man, I mean, I said, na, wealth, power, prosperity, success, all type of success. You can achieve everything. You stay healthy, or and happy. Because people are not happy. They are not happy. अब यहां पर भी हिंदुस्तान की और बाहर के मुल्कों की बड़ी बड़ी औरतें आई हुई हैं बड़ी बड़ी माँ बहन बेटियां आई हुई हैं तो बड़े लोगों को मैंने देखा वो थोड़े ना अलग नशे में रहते हैं मैं कुछ हूं भैया मैं कुछ भी नहीं हूं सब कुछ भगवान करा रहे हैं हम सब निमित्त मात्र हैं ऐसे भाव जो रखता है ना उसमें कभी कोई गुरूर नहीं आता और मनुष्य की सबसे बड़ी प्रॉब्लम द बिगेस्ट प्रॉब्लम ऑफ ह्यूमन बींग इज ईगो एंड इग्नोरेंस आप सहज रो ना सब कुछ भगवान से है मैं मात्र निमित्त हूं आई एम ओनली इंस्ट्रूमेंट ऑफ गॉड बस ऐसे भाव से खुश रहो प्रसन्न रहो कुछ लोग हंसते ही नहीं मुस्कुराते ही नहीं हा? मैंने सोचा बड़े लोग होने के बाद जोर से भी नहीं हंसते ऐसे होठों में मुस्कुराते 
मेरे से कुछ लोग बोलते बाबा जी अब आप एक सेलिब्रिटी हो गए हो आप थोड़ा ध्यान से हंसा हंसा करो आप जोर से हंसते हो मैंने कहा भैया ये सेलिब्रिटी में हंसना मना हो तो भैया मुझे सेलिब्रिटी नहीं बनना <laughs> या जिस सेलिब सेलिब्रिटी होने का मतलब आपकी हंसी चली गई <laughs> फिर ये क्या सेलिब्रिटी क्या उसको ओढ़ोगे बिछाओगे खाओगे पियोगे मस्त रहो मेरे को पिछले दिनों एक हंसने वाले प्रोग्राम में बुला लिया यहां इंडिया में एक शो चलता है कपिल शर्मा का शो <laughs> वो उस दिन बेचारा वो उस चुपचाप बैठ गया मेरे से बोले बाबा जी आ गए अब अपने आप हंसा देंगे हंसाओ सबको फंसाओ नहीं किसी को भी देखो <laughs> मैं आपको इसलिए बोल रहा हूं खुश रहो ना कुछ लोग कहते बाबा जी कैसे खुश रहे कुछ है ही नहीं जिंदगी में मैंने कहा क्या गड़बड़ हो गई अरे भगवान ने हमें इंसान बना दिया और क्या चाहिए आई एम ए ह्यूमन बींग आई एम ए वूमन आई एम ए मैन उससे वो ज्यादा दिस इज माई अल्टीमेट वेल्थ ये मेरा सबसे बड़ा वेल्थ है सबसे बड़ा ऐश्वर्य है ये मेरी सबसे बड़ी प्रॉस्पेरिटी है मैं एक इंसान हूं आई है अनलिमिटेड नॉलेज अनलिमिटेड पावर अनलिमिटेड स्किल सारा ब्रह्मांड मेरे पास है मैं चाहे ब्राह्मण हूं क्षत्रिय हूं वैश्य हूं पंजाबी हूं गुजराती हूं मराठी हूं क्या है मैं इंसान हूं ना तो मैं खुश क्यों ना रहूं तो खुश रहे खुश कहते बाबा जी पैसा नहीं है कैसे खुश रहे मेरे पास भी कुछ नहीं है देखो एकदम नंगा आदमी हूं खुश रहता हूं सबको खुश रखता हूं खुश रहो और को खुशियां बांटो खुशियां बांटने के लिए आपको पैसे की जरूरत नहीं पड़ती है खुशियां बांटने के लिए आपको कुछ बनने की जरूरत नहीं पड़ती है एकदम सहज हो जाओ आपको पीएमसीएम बनने की जरूरत He spoke from the heart and touched everyone's heart. I will now request Ritu Tyagi to please give the vote of thanks. Thank you, Harbin ji. Uh, vote of thanks to baad mein hoga. Mere ko kuch dil se kehna hai. I would like to begin with a quote by my own very daughter Maima, Maima Tyagi, who identifies as a young entrepreneur of 18. The quote begins: "I imagine women not as statues covered with flesh and skin, but everything beautiful in the universe, all the austerity, spinning, lurking." floating amidst the grandeur of the world i see women as power and i see them as mercy 
I see women as vanity and as simplicity. I see women as tactility and as purity. Women are the creator of human life, doubtlessly the core of human existence. A woman is an enigma, way beyond a mere combination of flesh and bones." Unquote. Good evening to all present beautiful ladies. Firstly, I would like to offer my profuse felicitations to our Reverend Swami Ramdevji for accepting the invitation to the conference so held in the honor of all the strikingly passionate women entrepreneurs from around the globe. Swami ji, basically, aapke liye aapka thoda sa dhyan chahungi. I comprehend a stark resemblance of great Swami Vivekananda. Every time I see Swamiji present here, dating back to year 1893, Swami Vivekanand himself won the hearts of many at Chicago, USA, with this famous speech beginning with my brothers and sisters of America. Swami Ramdev Ji carried forward the legacy by addressing a gathering at the same very place about a century later. I draw this parallel between the two due to the revolutionary shift in paradigm both rendered into the minds of people globally. Having this international ambassador of the art of yoga or yoga, as many may call it, is no less than having an iron pillar to hold strong our faith in the ability to bring change not only in the attitude in minds of people, but also in the course of economics and women involvement in the same. Here we thank you for being here with us, with us today, Swamiji, as a motivation for all women present in the room, regardless of their respective journeys, their ethnicities, or their geographical identities. Because we all are unique, but in that sense, we all are the same. My lovely ladies, I speak to you with a passion from my heart. We all have, which is, it is very common with us, that is of womanhood. I'm here to celebrate the greatness and tenacity of a woman and claim my staunch belief in the same. We are all challenged by the circumstances of patriarchy the global belief that women are incompetent in the field of economy. The world is blinded by the archaic notion of men being the bread earners and women being the caregivers, exclusive and separate from money matters. But we all are here, live examples sitting in this room contradicting this gross myth. I would like to commemorate the resilience of all women present, again with the quote, you can drape me over with shackles or fence me with your stagnant ba backyard. You can even nail my palms to the ground beneath us all. But can you, can you really kill my faith? Resilience, my belief in a better God, as Swamiji very rightly said, you can pull me back and tape my mouth to save your face that you've masked for all these days or weeks or years for I have lost count because all in these years I have conjured a patience unbound, a virtue of patience so steel and profound it has lost all concept of time. You may tie my wrists and veil my eyes, but can you really kill the vivacity treasured in the deepest archives of my mind? You can make me a recipient of disdain and contempt. You can make me a rat that menders your house, but can you tame the roar as mighty as the one that resides within? You can fence me with barbed wires, 
and set fire to the boundary that you can cage me in but the fire in my heart will encompass this whole earth while staying within you can leave marks on my tender skin you can leave bruises scars even but can you leave a single blot on my fierce mind and soul within you think your words hurt darling you think you can berate me but my faith you forget is pure titanium your confinements just liberate me this is all i finish but here is to the faith and once again resilience you all possess and inspire me with let us challenge the belief of the greatest economist of the india chanakya that women and money matters are not to be mingled by reaching the pinnacle of economic growth and progress cheers before i finish i know that i have written everything in the pages wo sirf isliye tha ki koi bhi mistake nahi honi chahiye we have a powerful positive people sitting here aur swami ji hamare sath hain unki shaan mein sirf do line kehna chahti hu is desh mein chand varshon se rajneeti ke galiyaron se bhrashtachar rupi रावण ने जन्म लिया और ये वो देश था जहां पर सिर्फ संतों और योगियों ने जन्म लिया है और हमारे देश को आगे बढ़ने से कोई रोक नहीं पाया पर राजनीति की भी अपनी अपनी सीमाएं होती हैं तो मैं इस मंच से आज कहना चाहती हूं कि स्वामी जी और सिर्फ स्वामी रामदेव जी ने ये साहस किया ये फैसला किया कि इस देश को देश बनाना है और आज जो भी सत्ता का चेंज हुआ है उसमें हमारे स्वामी रामदेव जी मैं एक औरत होने की हैसियत से यह बोलना चाहती हूं कि हमारे स्वामी रामदेव जी इस देश के रावण को मारने में हमारे हनुमान सिद्ध हुए हैं। अगर आप इस बात का समर्थन आपको है इफ यू बिलीव इन दिस स्टैंडिंग ओवेशन होना चाहिए स्वामी जी के लिए आई वुड रिक्वेस्ट सब खड़े होकर एक बार जोरदार तालियों से स्वामी जी का स्वागत कीजिए इन्हीं शब्दों के साथ मैं अपने शब्दों को विराम देती हूं धन्यवाद स्वामी जी स्वामी जी as a mark of our heartfelt gratitude we'd like to honor swami ji as an outstanding contribution to public life award thank you so much for being with us all due respect we will start our session that we had left off innovation in health and wellness i know lots of the speakers are still waiting uh, we will call the name one by one 
And once we do, you guys, uh, everybody come up on stage and we'll start the session right away. Our first speaker is Eddie Damala Lade Jobi, a nutritionist from Nigeria. Can I welcome her up on stage? I have the privilege to call on stage Bilay Want. Are you here, Bilay? A dear friend. Captain Abhimanyu, Deepika Trihan, Dr. Nazneen Akhtar, Dr. Sujata Sanjay, Elizabeth F. Marazita, Esther Thani, Fatima Kain, Hans Deep Kaur Kohli, Jill Quintard, Carla Walker, Kintla Stryker, Mary White, Minnell Hortness, Moni Ray Ayubi Zada, Empowerment Coach from USA, Maridula Shina, Neha Agarwal, Ula Collins. I want to thank the speakers on this panel for being so very patient. I'm also calling on stage Urmila Chanam from Breaking the Silence, Bangalore, India. Let's get a little bit of blood flowing.
Hi, everybody. Well, I feel as though after uh, Baba Ram Dev Ji's um, speech and everything he did, I feel like I have to rewrite my speech. <laughs> but it's, he's awesome, and it was such an awesome, awesome um, way he explained to us. And basically, what he has actually said is almost, in a way, in a nutshell, what I am about. Um, so I'm just going to get um, people to just... How many people in this room have heard of Ayurveda? And how many people in this room would like to live healthy and um, younger lives? I'd like to see everybody's hand up in that one. However, okay, innovation for health and wellness, what does that mean to me? To me, it's actually about, um, we have to find a new solutions from the old uh, that work for us. And it's often with the introspection and question that we will find our answers. So all, taking all of that in my stride, um, I've thought about it and I've gone back to the world is moving into such a fast way that we have to now go back to basics to get the answers to what we already have. It's just that we need to look inside us. Um, and the basics are that we actually learn to eat and live our lives on the basis of the Ayurveda, which is about sustainability, the sustainability is to ourselves and to the environment that we live in. Once we connect to that, we will actually be more in control of our lives and we can be masters of our life. And with that in mind, I've actually uh, looked at this and developed a program whereby I actually um, I am getting anybody who would like to learn to cook and to cook that is connecting to your gut, your taste, your senses. And it's under the Ayurveda, of the principles of the Ayurveda and to learn about their bodies. Because once we actually know that we are actually putting food which is going to our cellular level of proper nutrition, only then we can start feeling healthy. So um, this Ayurveda is a very age-old system and now it's becoming a new wave and becoming much the new way to treat our bodies. And um, presently, I'm from I am from London and uh, I'm part of the steering group and this is just to say that how Ayurveda is actually picking up such a, a exposure that the Welcome Trust are actually doing an exhibition which is going to be running from uh, this year, November to April next year. And it's all on Ayurveda. And with that, I would like to say thank you very much for giving me your time. Thank you. Thank you, Billy. In case you guys are wondering what the bell is for, we have lots of ladies and we only have an hour, so we're trying to keep it between two, to two, two minutes to two and a half minutes. So at two o'clock, you'll hear the bell. Then you have about 30 seconds after that. So that's how it'll continue. I will invite our next speaker uh, to come up onto stage, Dipika Trihan. She's the founder of Health of Women from India. A big round of applause. She's been waiting for a while and you look lovely. Come up on stage. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for my introduction. I am Dipika Trehan uh, from Bangalore, India, founder of the Health of Women Forum and the conceptualizer of a unique concept celebrating women at work called Corporate Diva. Well, after the huge dose from Baba Ramdev on wellness, uh, all I have to say is that your wellness, your health is within you. Unleash the power within you and live up to the Health of Women Forum's motto of making a woman fall in love again, this time with herself. Love yourself and stay healthy. Thank you.
Thank you for that powerful, short, and sweet message. Thank you so much, Deepika. I call on Dr. Nazneen Akhtar, the Executive Director of HASAB, coming from Bangladesh. Welcome, Doctor. Uh, good evening and namaste and assalamu alaikum to everyone. My soul sisters over here. Uh, and uh, before starting, I really want to uh, say very heartful thanks to our Harbin Arora, Dr. Harbin Arora, who is one of the inspiration of women. And she is a woman of really integrity and uh, dignity and of continuous inspiration. So she's a spell to every wo woman's life. Whenever I see her, I feel so good. Thank you for inviting me to this and my all soul sisters. I'm going to present because it's going to be very brief. I had a different mind to share, but I have to be very brief now. Uh, I, I am basically a public health specialist and I have two different hats. One is more kind of a public health. I was, uh, for longer years, many years, I was involved in the NGO social sector. And now for last five years, I'm a teacher, faculty by background, and I'm teaching the public health, masters in public health courses in a very renowned university in Bangladesh. So what I'm going to share over here regarding health and wellness, because I, in my social sector experience of the NGO doing program in health and development, there are quite a number of innovation we made through over the years, but I'm going to share a very smaller way, one of the big successful program where the health and wellness has been taken care of in a very different dimension. It's basically, you know, whenever we think about health and wellness, uh, wellness it's across, it has a different meaning across the people group, and also it's in an individual level. So we, we can see the definition that has been made by the WHO long, long back. The health is a state of physical, mental, social, and spiritual well-being, well -being, not merely an absence of disease and infirmity. So I really want to make this definition, which has not been changed within any punctuation or any word, till the day the definition has been made, every people are connecting to this definition. And it is years through years after till date, it is really the definition as it has been made long years back. So the connectedness of the health and wellness is basically a psychosomatic relationship. It's a body-mind relationship. So whenever we think about health, we only consider the body health, but we never connect it with the mind, but it is basically the body and mind, you have to connectedness. And if I share one of the program where a diversified group that we managed in our program, it was basically the social inclusion of the, is the solution to the health and wellness among the marginalized group. So this is the women group who are marginalized, and this is a word which is looked down word, disempowering word, but who are those marginalized? The program that we considered, that was basically the people living with HIV AIDS was one group, sex worker, street, brothel, and hotel-based sex worker, another group, and another group was the transgender, and another group was basically injecting drug user. So basically what we did, we tried to make a kind of a sense of solidarity development among them because they were looked down, they were discriminated, they didn't have any access to healthcare, they were depressed, and they were kind of an isolated community. From the mainstreaming, they were totally you know, moved away. So through our program, doing awareness, doing a little bit of leadership development, Doing a self-help group management, we developed them ultimately. And at the moment, if I tell you, over the five to seven years of this program, now they have access to healthcare. The transgender has an identity, so they are considered as third gender in Bangladesh. And also the people living with HIV AIDS are courageous women. They're living very strongly. They have access to healthcare. And they have also discrimination is reasonably taken away. So these are the immediate success of the program. But if I look to the later impact of the program, I can better claim that, you know, that these groups at the moment very strongly, they have a sense of solidarity. They are managing their program. So one of the NGO, this is positively people run the NGO and they are the leader for this program. They are managing the global fund for by themselves. They are the people living in the HIVS group. 
So all the self-help group that we developed, they become a big, big NGO by the time, five to seven years. So this is basically, you know, when where you think about a health and wellness issue, it's not only the individual, it can be across the community. And now these women, they have their ability to manage their own health, their own wellness in a different dimension. So I really wanted to bring out this issue, not in a personal end, rather than a more kind of a marginalized community end. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry for cutting you ladies short, but it's just that there's so many of us and we have another session. So we'll make it personal, something that we'll take home. And I will invite my next speaker now, Dr. Sujata Sanjay. Uh, she is a gynecolo leading gynecologist from India. Big round of applause for Sajata. Myself, Dr. Sujata Sanjay, I wish to thanks to organizer for giving me the opportunity and I'm proud to be only gynecologist in India, selected by the government of India as a hundred women of achievers. First, I believe health, education, and nutrition are the basic need of any individual. That's why I did more than 185 free health camp for the females, in which more than 6,000 females were beneficial. And I did more than 192 live radio talk show for the women health issues because I believe healthy female create a healthy world. And I wish you all healthy and happy life. Thank you very much once again. And I want to share something with uh, you by this month. Save girl child because female feticide is the biggest problem especially in the India. Beti bachaye, beti padhaye or beti khalaye. Hum sabhi jante hain, but the awareness is very important for the female fatty side. Thank you very much. Namaskar. Thank you so much, Dr. Sajata. I take this opportunity to call upon Elizabeth F. Marazita, an author and wellness entrepreneur from USA. Would you like to speak? I'd like to thank our incredible Dr. Ma Ooh. Harbin Aurora, our incredible MC Manu Sadhu, and I'd like to say to every one of my sisters and brothers at the WEF, Shukriya, Dankeschön, Tak, Merci, Grazie, Gracias. Tak Asanta Asante Sana. Thank each and every one of you for the inspiration you brought this week to those of us. And I'd like to share a story. When I was in seventh grade, my history teacher said, we are going to study world history and we're going to begin with a man who didn't fight using guns or tanks. And at the end of the life, when pe people ask this great man who brought justice to India and independence, they said, what is your message? And he said, my life is my message. When we talk about health and wellness, I have three words. I have three words I'd like to share with you in my two minutes. The first one is docere. I am a doctor, a doctor in Latin the root means to teach. So my message I have learned since I was in seventh grade is to teach. And everyone here on this platform, everyone I've worked with in the last two days and in this life and in my life as an investment banker and then as a doctor and now as a director of integrative medicine bringing brilliant women to the cloud for my brilliant company Mundo Pato, it is about teaching people to inspire others. The second word is about health and energy. And Baba, Baba Ji talked about it. He showed us and every exercise he did just now was chi, energy. And I lived in China a long time as a banker and then as a doctor. And the 
Character for Chi is composed of two vital characters. One is for breath. And what did Babaji do? He taught us to inspire, to bring the breath in. One, the character for chi includes the character for breath and then the character for nourishment or food or rice. We inspire what we breathe, we eat. We inspire what we learn. We eat and we are nourished by all, everyone here. And finally, the final character I learned was one of crisis. And crisis embedded in the character for crisis in Chinese is the character for opportunity. I have multiple sclerosis. I was diagnosed in 1997. I had to walk up here, but I walk with dignity and grace thanks to my sisters here. So when we look at the opportunities and crisis for health and wellness, they are manifold and we're here to learn together. So I will end with my seventh grade message. My seventh grade teacher taught me that Mahatma Gandhi said, my life is my message. And today I thank each and every one of you for saying, and I'd like to paraphrase the great Mahatma to say, our life in health and wellness is our message. And I salute each and every one of you. Namaste. Thank you, Elizabeth, for that inspiring message. Definitely health is the most important thing for us. Uh, next we have my hometown girl, well, Esther Thani. She's coming all the way from Vancouver. She is an executive director at Mondo Pat Pato uh, in Sing from Canada. So big round of applause for her. The way I have always felt connection and a feeling of home was with and through music. I have a passion for connection, connection to people. That passion has permeated through my life and all of my life's journeys, both personally and professionally. I first began my journey of connection as a music therapist, specializing in autism and special needs. Music connects two souls together in a deep way that requires no language, pure expression. After 20 years of connecting deeply with special needs children, parents, educators, paraprofessionals, and other therapists, I felt a driving force to connect beyond my zip code. I placed my music therapy curriculum on a cloud platform with Mundo Pato and was inspired by how I could now connect with others globally in an exponential way. I could reach thousands of children across the globe and help them reach their highest potential. My passion for connection has shifted now further to now empower other women and thought leaders in the cloud. Today, I am honored to connect with such inspiring thought leaders here. I invite you to hear my story further tomorrow at 2.15 p.m. My topic is empowering women in the cloud. Thank you graciously for this opportunity to connect with you. Thank you so much, Esther, for your articulate words. We thank you for being here as well. I do call upon Hansteep Korkoli, a researcher from India. Welcome. Good evening, everyone. I am Hansteep Korkoli. I'm an anthropologist. I had been researching and writing about indigenous populations of India. Today I would like to speak about development and health, parameters in improving menstrual health and reproductive health. In a developing country like India, reproductive health of women is an indicator of overall of population. The reproductive role of women starts from attaining menstruation to post-menopause 
period all through gestation birth child rearing and this places women at the focal point of a woman's reproductive health uh, at the focal point of the po of a population's reproductive health reproductive health is a necessary ingredient of health and major element of human development lack of proper health care facilities ailments treatments irrational belief system are some factors said to be aggravating the health and nutritional problems of the people of india especially rural india the focus on women's health gained impetus in recent times because of new knowledge and a deeper understanding of women's health problems there is an increasing need to view women's health issues in a holistic manner emphasizing the health needs and concerns of women at every stage and in every aspect of their lives from birth till old age menstruation is the focal point of starting of reproduction era of a woman and most important biological process which has been researched upon nationally and internationally and apart from process of menstruation it had been studied from perspective of knowledge about menar and hygiene maintenance by the anthropologists in india menstrual hygiene has been one of the prominent reproductive well being indicator which has been stagnant and not improving to enhance hygienic living during menstruation especially among rural females i want to explain my research endeavors as an anthropologist in the field of medical anthropology studying tribal and rural communities and their cultural patterns affecting considerably their health especially women's health i want to draw attention towards a tribal community of uttarakhand state of india called jonsar bawar tribe it's a polyandrous tribal group people of this tribe follow many distinct old customs where one woman one woman has to marry more than one man and sometimes group of brothers today i want to highlight beliefs conceptions and source of information regarding menstruation among females and to find out status of menstrual hygiene and to analyze problems faced by these females during menstruation to cut sh short my research and the results of my research i just want to highlight few important points and to highlight them i have to actually tell the statistics the results of my research in the among the total population total number of subjects i had which i had covered during my study 94% of the subjects in the study said that they on regular basis they use cloth during menstruation and they are not allowed to use sanitary napkins most of them confess that there is a concept of sacred and profane attached to the usage of sanitary napkins during menstruation and elder females of their families they don't allow them to use sanitary napkins and 64% of the subjects had no knowledge about menstruation before attaining manar and 34% of girls they said that they had very vague idea about this biolog very important biological process in every female's life i today want to uh, say that menstruation doesn't only make physiological change in a female's body but psychological changes also take place in our understanding of her own body and in this tribal context it was more hard for a girl to understand it because of cultural connotations which had been attached to menstruation of it being something profane i want to conclude today as there is shorter of time this study highlights need to educate females about menstrual hygiene and provide them with adequate information about practices of hygiene 
the information regarding use of sanitary napkins, cloth should be made available to tribal females for the purpose of enduring them to create a better world for themselves. Females were suffering from numerous infections like vaginal discharge, redness in vagina, urine infection. And some, uh, these were the common infections which were found. It is very important to educate these tribal girls about this very natural biological phenomena so that they can make their children they can make a better world for their own daughters, sisters. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sorry for trying to cut you short. It's just that we're so limited on time. And I really appreciate your study. And it's a very important topic to cover because it's part of our livelihood. So thank you for sharing those, uh, uh, those stats with us. Next, I have Jill Hilly Quintard. She's a wellness specialist all the way from Australia. Now, when I hear you all clap for all of our speakers, because it takes a lot of courage to come up here, ladies. Let's give them a big round of applause, everybody. Let's hear it for them. Their, uh, their energy is going to come from the audience. So let's give them some energy, OK? Thank you. Wonderful. Hello. It's actually amazing to be here. I've just been blown away by the energy. I didn't realize what it was going to be like, and amazing, incredible women. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, I'm from Sydney, Australia. I run a business called Body and Balance. I've been in the, this uh, industry of it's a mind-body connection, uh, yoga, Pilates, dance, working with children. Uh, I'm ex-teacher for children with special needs, but all of those areas have come together to form who I am today. I also uh, train a massage therapist as well, so a lot of anatomy and physiology and understanding of the body. And 37 years I've been in this industry. Um, I have a bit of a story though. I worked my body ridiculously hard. I came from a dance background, extremely hard uh, on, on your body. And so I believe that you needed to work incredibly hard to have uh, uh, the discipline to dance or whatever you were doing. Um, I did a lot of yoga and in 1997 I was in a hot yoga class and I had my labrum tear and the result was a hip replacement. And this is where I'm at now. I do not, I, 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 I dance all the time. I teach every day and I healed myself incredibly well. But I disagree with the, uh, the way of thinking of working so hard that you harm your body. So my innovation for health and wellness is that you look after your body. You think, you do your intuition to find out what suits your body what suits your mind and it's the balance of your mind and body that is going to increase your health and wellness this is what most of the people have been saying here i also do corporate and i work with children i've written a book and that book is on amazon and it's yoga pilates fusion so i fuse the two things together i think i do the the beautiful poses of yoga this is exactly what i do and the core and strength of Pilates, and then mix that with Yoga Nidra, the waking sleep. Yoga Nidra I've taught now for 40 years, and I'm the only teacher in Australia right now who has been given permission to train the teachers in schools how to train the children in Yoga Nidra, because that produces better productivity, less stress, bullying decreases, children have higher self-esteem. So I'm working very much in the area, yoga nidra, yoga pilates fusion, working from the body, the mind and balance of the spirit. Thank you very much for allowing me to have this time. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Jill. It's so lovely to know you're doing such unique things in Australia. And I, wanna, I want to have a session of your yoga nidra. It sounds blissful. We have Belay as well. We're two of us. <laughs> Where do we enroll? I'm calling on Kintla Stryker, founder and CEO Kintla Yoga, coming from USA. Welcome, Kintla. Ah, Om Shanti. I'm Kintla Stryker, the CEO of Kintla Yoga and the creator of Kintla Yoga Therapy, a trauma-informed, empirically supported, 
heart-centered, choice-driven, mindfulness-based yoga therapy designed to empower healing and trauma survivors. Our mission is to educate, to teach, and to empower all human beings who have experienced trauma in any form with compassionate and well-researched yoga and mindfulness practices. It is an honor to be here and a big dream of mine uh, to launch my work globally on the Mundo Pato cloud. I am a trauma survivor. Each and every one of us in this room tonight is either a trauma survivor or close to, uh, have, has a close personal friend or family member that is a trauma survivor. Yoga helped me heal. In 2014, I led a research case study with Michigan State University with a combat veteran suffering the effects of PTSD. After eight weeks of yoga, his brain showed remarkable changes. Among many items, his working memory capacity more than doubled and his PTSD symptomology disappeared. Eight weeks of yoga. It matters if even one person heals. But what excites me beyond imagination is that when one person heals, we all heal. There is an undeniable ripple effect. Healing the individual heals the collective. One thing is for certain, my clients have taught me that people are their own best healers. Once they learn healing tools, the sky's the limit. From the beginning, the intention of Kintla Yoga Therapy has been to empower individuals to see their own light, to heal and reconnect mind, body, spirit, breath, to feel, to increase confidence, to find peace, to rediscover joy, and to move forward with concrete tools, wholeheartedly embracing every aspect of being fully present and alive for the rest of their lives. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Thank you, Ms. Stryker, for that lovely, lovely, inspiring speech, and your voice is so soothing. Uh, next speaker, I have Mary White to come up on the stage. She's a counselor and clinical hypnotherapist all the way from the UK. So big round of applause for Mary. You, love, you look lovely in blue. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. I'm always <laughs> uh, Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm so inspired to be here. It's wonderful to be able to uh, share a few moments with all you wonderful soul sisters. And of course, I have to include our soul brothers. Um, I'm from the UK and uh, I'm a hypnotherapist and a counsellor um, and I work with a number of issues as most hypnotherapists do but I actually uh, specialize in addiction. I try to help uh, people who have um, alcohol dependence or drug problems. Um, now the reason why I decided to specialize in that area is because I have a history. Um, I used to live in South Africa and I had very difficult times there. I lost my partner um, to um, alcohol addiction and uh, through my recent years, I was inspired to uh, study counseling. Um, I sort of fell into hypnotherapy, which I felt was a very powerful medium uh, to help people heal. And uh, so many people are suffering with uh, negative issues, 
mainly anxiety that underpins just about all the problems that we have. And um, therefore, most of the people that come to see me do come with anxiety issues. But as I said, I specialize in addiction and I am very pleased to say that I've been able to help quite a few people, both male and female, to uh, recover from um, their addiction and go on to live normal lives. Uh, so my role really is to help people heal by turning negative um, thought processes into positive positivity and joy in their lives through the use of hypnotherapy. Uh, hypnotherapy is something that's very uh, misunderstood, but hopefully um, it is an innovative method uh, compared with the conventional Alcoholics Anonymous method, but um, I consider it to be the way forward to help addiction. So thank you so much for listening to me. Um, I'm very proud to be able to be here today. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mary, for speaking with us this evening. I welcome Minil Potnis, the director of Aina Wellness from India. Good evening, Soul family. Quickly, uh, those of you who could join me, could you just fill your cheeks with air like this? Cover them with your three fingers and just breathe hard and smile. So, and relax. Quickly, again. And smile. Hold that thought and relax. Just to give you a little perspective on my of my life in the face yoga universe my expertise in Southeast Asia my dad was a widely uh, traveled man and because of his work I also traveled with him and got to know that there are in some parts of the world alternative therapies and when I took a dive into face yoga initially to find a good treatment for my father the study soon became a passion and now I take this as a profession which my aim is to reach out to the millions because face yoga is beneficial for everyone globally. In the name of beauty, health and wellness, face yoga. What is face yoga? An intensive rehabilitation and beautifying technique that requires a scientifically standardized set of exercises. What we just did was just a small um, drop in the ocean to improve muscle coordination, tonality, and circulation in your face. It's a simple, non-invasive way using 57 muscles of your face, neck, and scalp to increase circulation oxygen, toning, and rejuvenate the cells from the inside out. I have an MBA in HR, and over the 25 years uh, experience in top management, and this has helped me to evolve face yoga into a program for anti-aging and stress management. Currently, we interfacing with neurosurgeons, cosmetologists to align this program for I issues of autism, ALS, muscle dystrophy, and now uh, stem cells as a rehabilitation part of it. So um, my, uh, this particular journey has been very interesting, eight years, and I'm quite confident that this new age technology applied rehabilitation using facial muscles is the new, new future or in the near future can be directed towards health of the common man for a common cause. Thank you, Jahel.
Thank you very much. I'll bring our next speaker on board, Mona Ray. Uh, she's an empowerment coach uh, from the USA. If she can come up on stage. As I look around me, I'm astonished by the beauty of each one of you. I see these beautiful and dazzling dresses presenting, representing the glorious garment of service with the dazzling diadem of love as you spread your energy, your joy, and your love to each one that comes in contact with you. The Persian poet Hafiz says these beautiful words. Even after all this time, the sun never says to the earth, you owe me. Look what happens with a love like that. It lights up the whole sky. As I have traveled to more than 30 countries, I have been involved in empowerment and advancement of women education in character building and virtue project for children, moral leadership for youth, and spiritual upliftment and education for preteens in different countries, I have understood that eternally the heart has been focused as the seat of revelation of the spirit. That once connected, it becomes recipient of divine guidance, knowledge, wisdom. It energizes us, it ennobles us, and it sustains us. And it can unfold an amazing potentials in, within us. But now the last few decades, the scientists have found great revolutionary studies that heart is more than a most powerful organ in the body, that it has an intelligent system, that brain and heart have electromagnetic field, but the electromagnetic field of the heart is 5,000 times more stronger than the brain, that it has its own nervous system and actually has molecules of kindness called oxytocin. It keeps us young, it uplifts us, it energizes us. And when there is acts of kindness, it creates ripple effects that more than 50 to 100 people are affected by one single act of kindness. And that with those acts of service, as it brings happiness to us, Immediately, we look, our heart seeks to bring happiness and kindness to others. So as the, the science is now proving that once the heart creates harmony and coherence with acts of passion and love, that can illuminate the whole world. So powerful is the light of unity and love that can illumine the whole world. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for illuminating this whole room. Thank you. That was beautiful. Molecules of kindness. I love that. <laughs> I call upon a dear friend, Mridula Sinha, Secretary, State Institute of Rural Development. Mridula? <laughs> Neha Agarwal, Strategy and Planning Expert, Reliance Geo Infocom. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. First and foremost, I would like to thank Dr. Herbin and the organizers for giving me an opportunity to be among some wonderful people here who are accomplished individuals from different sections of the society. I would today restrict my talk for innovation in health and wellness at the workplace. There has been a dramatic shift in the attitude 
away from relying solely on the traditional Western medicine and more emphasis on responsive technology, holistic practices, and wellness first. With a heavier emphasis on technology, companies are now focusing on optimizing mind and body performance via wearables, which is a great way to engage employees with cutting edge benefits. Examples of wearable tech include speedometers, fitness trackers, and even devices which now monitor your sleep patterns and stress levels. Virtual healthcare is now another emerging employee wellness trend that takes advantage of the technology. Doctor consultations from the phone, Skype, within minutes of the request, and same-day prescription delivery have set a new norm as apps disrupt traditional healthcare. Crowdsourcing health advice is another relatively new and disruptive concept. I remember a startup in London which has a panel of 70 experts on hand to deliver solutions to a myriad of health and wellness questions, maybe from hangover cures to how to beat insomnia or to increase our immunity. With this trend of one in 10 Google searches now about wellness, it's safe to say that where the internet has democratized access to information, huge innovation from health advice will follow. All in all, it is a shift in mindset that is empowering great results for now. The coming years will see a tremendous movement from with respect to wellness and innovation within the health industry. Companies are now committed to pursue innovative solutions that drive more informed consumer behavior in healthcare and help employees become more healthier version of themselves. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Agarwal. Uh, next speaker is Ula Collins. She's the founder of Avanti Pilates. She's from the UK. Seems like she's coming here and doing some Pilates with us. Big round of applause for her. Welcome. First of all, I would like to thank you all for your kind, loving, and supporting, very supportive energy and attention. I haven't done this for the last, I think, 20 years. The last time I did it, what public speak, spoke when I was at university. So, thank you. <laughs> um, in the short time I've got, I just wanted to share with you my journey from local to global. My journey as a mother, as a business owner, um, as a friend, and as a foreigner. I started my business when I moved to England, but I'm actually Polish. So my daughter was two years old and I built a very successful and fulfilling business, which is based on authenticity and my intuition. I made it happen, believing in myself, not following anybody's example, but trying to find something which would be unique and special and real and by doing this I managed to create something which is catching people want to come to my classes they want to belong because I create a space for them to connect with themselves with their bodies and with each other finding a space to stop and think and feel and feel connected I'm here because one of my students noticed me and she invited me here. I was working on a local level as a teacher doing my job as well as I can, but I wasn't expecting to be here and here I am because my work comes from my heart. I love what I do and I do what I love. I'm really happy with what I do. I'm really happy I found it. I found, combined my passions my interests, my talents together, things which are important to me in my life. I combine my personal and, personal and professional life with unity, so it all complements, one complements the other, and I'm really happy and fulfilled, successful businesswoman. Thank you very much, and maybe you can join me during my talk 
about loving what you do and doing what you love on Thursday. Thank you. And thank you, lovely Ula. Our last speaker for the evening for this session, I call upon Urmila Chanam from Breaking the Silence, Bangalore, India. Welcome, Urmila. It's a big walk, specially designed for the wellness session. Opinion and perspectives of individuals and society at large is impacting the health, accessibility and availability of facilities and services, education, livelihood, aspirations and self-esteem of 355 million menstruating girls and women in India. According to a survey done by A.C. Nelson, commissioned by the government of India in 2011, only 12% of India's girls and women use sanitary pads, suggesting 88% use unhygienic materials and products like ash, hay, cotton, even polythene. 23% of India's girls are dropping out of school when they hit puberty because of lack of supportive infrastructure, like a toilet especially for girls or even a dustbin. And even lack of empathetic environment because teachers are not sensitive to what is going on in the bodies of girls in the campus. 72,000 women die because of cervical cancer, one of the reasons being poor menstrual hygiene in India, killing more women in India than anywhere else in the world. How have we allowed for things to escalate to such a degree? And here we are fighting between two schools of thought which believe that the sanitary pad is good and the other believes that the cotton cloth recyclable, reusable cloth is better because it is environment friendly. Another school of thought says silicon cup is the solution for the 21st century women. Incineration is under fire by environmentalists who say that XYZ percentage of carcinogenous substances are emitted when you burn sanitary pads and sanitary products at low temperature. Today we are fighting for tax-free sanitary materials in India. I just saw that mail on change.org. But aren't these problems outside of us? What are we doing for our thoughts that believe that menstrual blood is impure and allows every mother to push her daughter away from family life, making her eat in utensils, separate, sleep separate, be pushed away from everybody. What are we doing about that? Stigma is the biggest barrier in attainment of menstrual hygiene. Unless we tackle stigma, nothing great is going to happen if only a mother can tell her daughter menstruation is a natural life-giving phenomenon and nobody has a right to subjugate you and isolate you because you bleed. I think the problem will end there and we will not have to think about the problems which are outside of us. I want a world free of stigma. I want an enabling environment for girls and women in India and globally and they will do things on their own. Thank you. Powerful closing note. Thank you, Urmila, for that. Thank you. I'd like to seamlessly take that into the award ceremony. We have Dr. Harbin Arora on stage with us to present the award to this all ladies panel. I'd like to acknowledge Belbir Want as the iconic leader creating a better world for all. Deepika Trihan, the founder of Health for Women, as the iconic woman leader, creating a better world for all. <laughs> Dr. Nazneen Akhtar, please step and accept your honor.
India. Congratulations. USA. The beautiful body of work she's <laughs> Esther Thane, as the iconic woman creating a better world for all. Congratulations. Jill Quintard from Australia. Congratulations to you as well. session, a very exciting discussion ahead with a very illustrious panel. We're in conversation with the leaders of the decadent media and it's my honor to call on stage Mr. Amit Goyal, 
Amit, would you please join us on stage? Hello to our lovely lady ladies as they're executed. And this is the vice chairman of the Pioneer India. Calling on Anita Nair. stage, Barkha Dutt, a name we all know. Barkha, do we have you? The Leg Bill. Jordana Wojovic. Erika Mikkelsen. Kelsen, CEO and producer, Nordic Media Light from Sweden. Welcome. Welcoming Dragana, the president, B Premium Group Social Media from Serbia. My privilege to, um, to welcome on stage once again, Delek Bill, founder of Purple Sustainable Ideas from Turkey. Raji M. Shinde. Parul Sharma. Welcoming Parul Sharma, the Executive Vice President of Star TV. Registrar of Newspapers for India. A very warm welcome, sir. Calling on Seema Goswami. Seema Goswami, journalist, author, columnist from India. An absolute honor. Also acknowledging the presence of Veer Sangvi in the audience. A true supporter. <laughs> Privilege to welcome on stage Venki Venkatesh. Welcome, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, let's bring a little bit of warmth in here. The CEO of the Press Trust of India, India. Welcome. Requesting Padam Shri Holder Alok Mehta to join us on stage, please. Thank you, sir. Sri Alok Mehta, former president, Editors Guild of India. Warm welcome to you this evening. I'd like to request Mr. Anurag Batra, do we have you in the house? To come on the stage, please. 
anyone sees him, get him. <laughs> and Barkha, Barkha Dutt. Raji, are you Ra Raji Shinde is here? Okay. Oh, well, it's an absolute honor and privilege to have with us some of the leading lights of media from India and from the rest of the world as well in my search for women and leaders across the world who are making a difference in their own unique way. It's been a very passionate journey in the past one year discovering soul sisters and soul brothers in different parts of the world and I'm so glad to have with us um, some of the people who've been really great friends over the past years and in this the first name that comes to my mind and my heart is none other than Amit Goel, a vice chairman of the Pioneer. Uh, the Pioneer story is a very unique one. It is the oldest English language daily in India. It's very historic. And it's uh, got a passionate team of supporters who refuse to see it go. And Amit is one of those evangelists who has been part of the core team ensuring that Pioneer not just survives but succeeds. It is my absolute pleasure and deep delight to welcome here my dear friend Amit Goel. Thank you, Arbeen, for your kind words. Uh, now that media is known for television journalism, electronic media as we call it, and we poor print media really have to go around introducing ourselves. But my journey in media, as I've been told to tell something about myself, started in 85, 86. And uh, I worked for many newspapers. Indian Express, Financial Express, Times of India, Economic Times, Hindustan Times, Asian Age. And finally, my last move was to the Pioneer in 1998 when Dr. Chandan Mitra took over the paper. It's a paper started by the Britishers in 1864 and Winston Churchill and uh, Rupiard uh, Kipling were its journalists. And, uh, Nobel laureate Rupert Kipling, in fact, wrote his famous jungle book while he was in Pioneer. It changed hands many times over the years, and finally, in 98, Chandan Mitra took it over. I was with the Economic Times. I was the chief of bureau and senior editor when I was invited to join him. It was a challenging task. It was a loss-making paper. He, had just, he was the editor. Chandan was the editor, and I was with the Economic Times. So we joined hands together, and we turned it around. We are afloat. We have uh, eight English editions all over India and four Hindi editions. We are trying to survive ourselves. It's not an easy task, let me tell you. And uh, my only distinction, uh, I worked with all famous editors excepting one, and who I've always admired, and I should mention it, he's sitting in the audience, Mr. Veer Sangvi. And we so I've been very lucky to have been worked with all top names, all editors. I mean, starting from Suman Dube when I joined Indian Express, to Swami Nathan Ayer, N.S. Jagannathan, Arun Chori, T.N. Nainan, Ajay Kumar. I can name a lot, but uh, since your audience is from 100 different countries of the world, they probably would not know this. So my journey, my only distinction from other journalists has been that I worked for about two hours in Hindustan Times and uh, 15 minutes in Asian Age. So I've been moving around a lot. I worked in various capacities. And uh, Pioneer, of course, has been a challenging task. And, uh, and now, I think being now being the shareholder of the Pioneer, I don't intend to move out from here. My, my memorable moment in my career uh, was in 86, 87. I had just started off my career and Arun Shori was the editor and Indian Express was on strike and we were asked to break that strike and enter the building. So we all queued up outside 
are uh, i'm just telling you what the dangers sometimes we all praise uh, army and forces and they face dangers we also as journalists we don't get credit for that we also face lot of dangers so it there was a hostile government of indian express not my hostile government ideologically but my hostile government indian express arun shori the editor and there was a strike and it was believed i don't know whether it is true or not that it is the government which is uh, kind of uh, helping the strike strikers and we were supposed to break that strike and enter and still remember we were the foot soldiers there was a long queue of people who were not interested in strike we have to put our hands like this and enter because the stones were thrown at us and acid bullets were thrown at us and one of the scars which i have is a bounce of an acid ball which hit the wall and and the acid hit our face so we also face lot of danger we are not less than any armed forces so sometimes media get lot of criticism but media is uh, is is very important we all know that and we are also not afraid of the criticism and we should take it in a stride so i am very happy with my journey i am very happy where i am and thank you very much thank you very much for acknowledging my work it's been 30 years and thank you thank you thank you very much Thank you so much, Amit. Um, you also made the journey from uh, the Economic Times, the corporate world, uh, to what we call mainstream media. But as we had a discussion on uh, the inaugural day yesterday with Mr. Raj Nayak of Colors and Karthik Sharma of uh, ITV, that today, with the power of social media and with so much of uh, campaigns coming from the corporate world itself. Uh, there's so much of user generated media as well everything is becoming media everything is becoming a mouthpiece to say what it has to say i have with me anita nayar who is the md of uh, avas which is a french company communications company media and communications company and she has really grown avas's presence uh, in india across south asia and they have a very unique concept of call call meaningful brands uh, brands that create a meaningful connection with their people are brands also becoming the media today for that i call upon anita nayar to share her, her thoughts good evening everybody um, thank you so much uh, harbin uh, it's indeed a absolute pleasure to be on this forum today um, i will not take too much time on talking about myself but uh, just to mention that uh, i've been in the industry 30 years and i'm i'm from the other side of uh, the table not like amit uh, from journalism but uh, i am from uh, media advertising and marketing so it's it's absolutely the other side of the table where we uh, used to meet uh, friends like him uh, for advertising and taking it forward uh, i've been last 10 years with havas media and uh, uh, very often you know when uh, in india one talks about my organization and they say havas havas how do you pronounce it you know and uh, and uh, uh, we always say that you know havas in hindi we all know what it means but to me uh, uh, it's not lust it's passion so it's the way you look at it you know so havas can be lust and havas can be passion as well so i think we are one of the most passionate agencies uh, in the in the country today and uh, we are known for uh, for that passion and as harbin said that we our philosophy is based on meaningful brands because you know uh, the st study that we do globally mentions that if a brand would vanish tomorrow people would miss a brand or not miss a brand and uh, the story behind it is actually 74% of the people will not miss any brands because if you're not meaningful to people's lives then you know uh, brands uh, will die and people will move from if coke goes they move to pepsi and we all know the story of nestle uh, you know what happened with maggi noodles for example so i think it's very very important to be uh, meaningful and uh, not only meaningful for b being meaningful for brands but i think as individuals also we need to be uh, very very meaningful uh, just couple of things that i want to share with you which i have learned through these uh, three decades of my uh, uh, experience in the industry and uh, honestly they are very simple things it's nothing that we don't know and what i say is nothing that all of us don't know and which is why they are very simple one is that uh, you know um, you should never get anxious uh, because you didn't get what you were aspiring to get yeah because whatever happens happens for the good and whatever doesn't happen it's not meant to happen so that's number one and the second thing is on there is absolutely uh, no shortcut to success so uh, working hard work with honesty is something which will allow you to scale as many heights 
uh, in any field, uh, be it personal or professional. Thank you so much for listening to me. Thanks. Thank you so much, Anita. I really appreciate your coming from Mumbai over here. We have next somebody who's come from uh, all the way from Sochile, if I get the pronunciation right, from Sweden. She is Sweden's first female sports journalist, but that's not where it ends. That's how she started and entered the field of media. And then she made a few definitive, defining decisions in her life. For instance, she went to university. She spoke to a professor. She was very curious. She thought as a media person, the first thing you need to have is curiosity. You need to look out, to be curious, want to find out about other people, other cultures. And she asked the professor, hey, do you know about India? And do you know about the Vedas in India? And the professor just shrugged and moved away and she quit the university. A university that's not curious wasn't one for her. So a woman of her own mind, she's written about five books, if I'm right, and the one she's going to be also talking a little about, uh, she started her own TV company, which she wants, which is going to be an international uh, web-based TV channel. Uh, it's called Nordic Light Media. We all know about the Nordic Lights. So in January, the Northern Lights give out these beautiful colors. And I think that's what she means, would be the philosophy behind. And her book is called, which she's now translating from Swedish to English, is called Good News for Change. I invite Erika Mikalson to say a few words. Thank you so much. I am you, and you are me, and we are one. That is what I have been reminded of today on this wonderful heart-driven event. And I'm deeply grateful to my beloved and dear soul sister, Dr. Harbin Arora, for inviting me here and for doing this wonderful event together with her life partner, Mr. Rai, who is a real man, because only real men support women. <laughs> so also eternal gratitude to all you behind the scene. I see a lot of people taking photographs, filming, and doing all sorts of technical solutions, and serving, and oh, you make us feel so loved and so welcomed here in India, Mother India, because I really feel at home here. So in the power of now, I would love to ask you, how many of you believe there is power in media? Please raise your hand. Come on, is there power in media? Yeah. yeah, of course it is. How many of you think there is gender equality in media? <laughs> Not so many, and you're absolutely right. Because in a recent research by the UN, it shows that 50% of the global world population only have 25% access of the power of media. It is a man's world there too. But I am very grateful to all you soul brothers too that are supporting uh, women in media. Anyway, um, should women be concerned that the situation is like this. 25% of the women have access for power of media. Should we ask for permission to get more access, do you think? I can't hear you. No, we shall take it right, you are. So, because when women take part of and produce in media, we can change journalism to become more inspirational and focus on what is good in the world. I have heard of law of attraction and I think you also have. Uh, law of attraction works both ways, both when you focus on the negative 
You get more of the negative when you focus upon the good. You get more good. And that is why I ended a rather successful career in media in Sweden, when among other things, I was an anchor woman for the late night news, national TV news. I also worked with foreign news, and I don't know if you have thought about it, but I have not seen any boundaries on this globe, and that makes me very happy, because in this world we are one. So, <laughs> thank you. So, I believe that we need to take more action. We need more women in media. And on Thursday, I ask you to, or invite you to my speech, um, 7.15 p.m. It's called Good News for an Even Better World. And then, ladies and gentlemen, we will launch India's first I believe, uh, women-owned and produced web TV channel with good news. Focusing, <laughs> focusing only on women empowerment and environmentally friendly living. And that should be news from the heart. So ladies and gentlemen, I invite you invite you from my heart for you to come and meet the lovely ladies who are working with me in this channel. It's their channel, not mine, but I'm mentoring them. So I hope you will go and look for the link because it's not ready yet, but I will give you, we will give you the link on Thursday, 7.15 p.m. Don't forget it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Erika. I now call upon my dear sister, Dragana from Serbia, who owns her company, her social media network owns every second blog in Southeastern Europe. 400,000, that's the number of blog her B Premium Group owns. She says B because she works like a honey bee. And lucky me, I got a B in my name too. And she just called me Queen B. I welcome Dragana, the queen of social network and social media in Southeastern Europe. Thank you, our lovely Queen B. Thank you, Dr. Herbin, uh, dear ladies, uh, dear gentlemen. It's an honor to be here tonight. Um, Actually, I was thinking about what to share with you uh, as a thought, as an idea, as an inspiration uh, for the beginning of this amazing event. I will uh, share with you uh, more details about my business and uh, how I see this social media world on uh, Wednesday, actually tomorrow at 1, uh, 15 p.m. Uh, but tonight I just wanted to share with you uh, how I understand this, our confusing business world. At the beginning of my career, uh, I thought that we actually um, don't need to keep trying to be good, uh, don't need to be, uh, keep trying to be different, that we just have to keep trying to be good, because being good is different enough. But then I was faced with a dilemma, is being good good enough? Actually, I think it's not. Although we have to be good, we need to be committed to great and meaningful things, doing good things. So being just good, not being committed to a higher goals, meaningful work, and, and good things for us all is simply not good enough. And no, for me, business is not just about winning. It has always been about well-being, which is what the word wealth truly means. Business is not about competing with each other, especially in social media. Business is about fighting together to make a world or our little piece of it a little better, more inspiring for us all. And this is who I am. Uh, that is what I share with all of you today and with all Ladies League and with all our friends all over the world who are truly successful. 
that is something I want to share with you during these several days, sending a message that actually you showed us how good we are and how amazingly good business world could and should be. Thank you for that. Thank you, Dr. Harbin. Thank you so much, Dragana. I know we are uh, running on uh, a tight leash where time is concerned. Mansi has reminded me. I will go straight to Dilek Bill from Turkey, who is bringing sustainability issues uh, through her platform, which is a media and communications agency. Uh, she will share a little about it, but she uh, has uh, had honest uh, CNBC -E, uh, interviewed about 40 opinion leaders to get their word out into the mainstream media about making our world a better place. Dilek Bill from Istanbul. Thank you, everyone. I'm honored to be here. Thank you, Dr. Arbin, once again, having given me the opportunity to be with you tonight. Yes. Like Dr. Harbin told you that I have created a TV show and I decided to go into sustainable development area. It was a very a virgin area that no one really knew much about it in the country. So I decided to create, a, create my own TV show and I, cha I shared it with the CEO of the CNBC and uh, asked him if I could interview people who has done good in the sustainable development area. And he said, perfectly all right, go find your sponsors and uh, create your own TV show. I went around and uh, asked Unilever to support me. And they were very kind enough to do that for like 40 shows. And uh, I interviewed 40 plus CEOs, opinion leaders, NGO leaders, and talked about how sustainable development can change the world our country and business and it did make a difference when i first started i was not even able to find people to interview it was very difficult to convince them because they didn't have much to say but towards the end everybody was happy everybody was ha uh, happily talking about it and uh, cnbc closed down in turkey now we're going to move the show to another tv channel but now i'm going i'm writing my own book on the uh, TV show and interviewing the same people after two years, where they are now, how they are looking at their life from the sustainability point of view. So we know media is the power, it was said before, and, uh, but one growing love we have is the social media. It's not changing the way we communicate, it's changing the way we do business, the way we are governed, the way we are living in our societies. All around the world, media, social media, is going from, an, from nice to have to a must to have. It's shaking up the healthcare and public health. Social media, media platforms may be the banks of the future. It's going to change a lot of people's lives who are in poverty, who are not able to reach uh, the sources of uh, finance, but they will be able to do it through social media, through digitalization. Social media is changing how we are governed. And we have lived through that. They made a difference. They changed governments. They changed systems. They changed political views. Social media is helping us tackle with a lot of the world's biggest issues. Challenges, human rights, violence. And they're doing good too. Before I finalize my words, I would like to share with you an anecdote that recently happened in, uh, I don't know if you have come across with that, but uh, a young boy, Jeremy Jar, he has come across with a heartbreaking video of a five-year-old Somalian girl who had walked 150 kilometers to find water for her mother, but on the way she couldn't make it. When he had seen this little YouTube film, he was so much touched and he immediately tweeted and he said, hashtag Turkish Airlines help Somalia. The reason he said Turkish Airlines was because Turkish Airlines was the only direct flight that he could find to Mogadishu. 
And he, the minute he created that social media campaign and started collecting money, everybody thought he was not very serious. But in less than 24 hours, he collected one million plus US dollars and people sent that money to a bank account that they didn't even know much about. But people were touched with this news and they sent the money and the Turkish Airlines provided the airplane and the goods, food and healthcare items were sent to so Somalia and saved so many people's lives. So media is powerful and social media is changing our lives. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tilek. I will now move on to the leading lady at Star TV, who was the head of communications for 14 years, now the spokesperson of Star TV, a very dear friend, Parul. Thank you. It's a very special honor and a sort of a humbling experience to be here in the presence of uh, so many great achievers here today. Um, in fact, the recognition could not have come at a better time as I stand at the threshold of great new change. I had just decided to move on, actually, from my role at Star India. I was with Star for 14 years, heading communications for them, for the group. And um, so when I quit recently, I was contemplating what next. Uh, I was wondering whether I should pursue my passion for photography or my passion for communications. Uh, but this award is an inspiration for me to pursue whatever I like. It's a reminder that we need not compromise on, you know, uh, we need not compromise one for another. And actually we can have it all if we put our heart and mind into it. I see this award at uh, Women, Women Economic Forum as just not something that recognizes my past contributions, but also as, um, as something that has helped me decide about my future as well. So thank you, Women Economic Forum. It's a pleasure to be here with you this evening. Thank you. Thank you so much, Paru. I will now invite Mr. S.M. Khan, who is the Director General of the Registrar of Newspapers of India, and he's had an illustrious career in the media, spanning uh, time spent at uh, Doordarshan, which is, uh, has the largest infrastructure of content distribution in India, about 70% uh, over here. And uh, being a state channel, it is still used a lot for dissemination of information for the purpose of communication and education, in addition to entertainment. Mr. Khan. Thank you. Thank you, Harbin. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, good evening ladies and gentlemen. I am thankful to Women Economic Forum for inviting me to this uh, uh, very informative session with the media personalities from all over the world. And my thanks to Mr. Venera and uh, Dr. Harbin Arora for giving me this opportunity. I am from the other side of uh, communication, that is government communication. I have put in more than 30 years of service in government of India and uh, trying to sell the government policies and programs and government viewpoint on various things and making people to believe it. So uh, I have worked in various departments. Uh, as far as the, we were just discussing about power of media, I agree with this. Media is a very powerful instrument in our country. And, uh, but uh, what we require is that media should uh, be authentic, credible, and whatever media want to say, should say with some kind of authority and should not be lost in breaking news syndrome. Because these days we see a lot of rush in breaking stories, particularly on the broadcast media and the social media. Print media, because they have a lot of time, at least 18 hours, 10 hours, 24 hours. To, to file a story. So they are not that much in that business. But information with uh, credibility is a really a great weapon. And in our country, we say that media is the fourth estate after legislature, judiciary, and executive. So the responsibility lies quite a lot of media to be a kind of a balance 
between other three main organs of the government. Another information which I want to give in the context of India is that uh, as we see trend in other countries that print media is coming down, in our country it is uh, growing. And last year, because I am heading a department which deals with newspapers, and right now we have 10,000 10, registered newspapers and magazines in our country, more than a lakh the registered newspapers. Though on the other hand, we also have got 800 uh, television channels, but this print media is growing and last year we had witnessed a growth of about 6% in print media and daily we receive about 200 applications to start a new newspaper because in our country a newspaper is to be registered before being published. I wish all of you great success in the coming days because you will be having a number of panel discussions on various uh, subjects and wish all the delegates and particularly because this is an initiative where uh, a very important section of the society that is women, they are playing a very, very major role in the discussions and this forum. I wish this forum and all the delegates a good time in Delhi and a very, very fruitful discussion here. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mr. Khan. Forgive me, I'm playing musical chairs here. Uh, I'd love to invite now Seema Goswami, who's a journalist, a columnist, and I used to read your columns in the brunch a lot. Uh, very lively, very energetic. Uh, she's written a prophetic book titled Women on Top. And I have no doubt, ma'am, because the cream always rises to the top. Thank you. Hi, good evening to you all. Uh, I've been told that I should share some details of my journey in journalism and how I started out and how I went on. But frankly, that sounds tedious beyond belief. And I wouldn't inflict it on all of you after a long day at this session. What really concerns me today is the journey that journalism has been on since I've been in the media. And when I look back from when I started as as a junior reporter, as a sub-editor, to now when I write a column for a national newspaper, I find things that are rather disquieting because journalism no longer seems to be about the news. It's more about opinion, it's more about holding forth, it's more about exhibiting your prejudices and things that you feel rather than things that are fact. And there is place for that in journalism. As a columnist, I wouldn't have a job if there wasn't a place for that in journalism. But journalism has to be about the news. And what it has been reduced to is like a shouting and screaming match every evening on our TV sets when you have one topic that you outrage about and you call the same five people to come and talk about it, talk over each other, scream at each other, and unfortunately, we the viewers are as complicit because that's what we choose to watch. Even the few channels that actually do news don't get the kind of ratings that channels who do noise do. And that is what is really disquieting to me as a journalist. In fact, given how things are, I hesitate to actually introduce myself as a journalist now because the word has become so debased because of what we've turned the news into. So that's the journey that I would like to reflect on. And as consumers of media, I think that's something that we all need to reflect on today because we need to make a choice as to what the media should be. And we make that choice by choosing what we read and what we watch. And that's something that all of us are responsible for. That's all I wanted to share with you today. Thank you. Thank you, Seema, for really bringing out a very pertinent point of view, which has been a recurring theme across our various sessions on the media. Uh, I have a little uh, uh, trite theory on it, and that is first there was boxification of news. It entered the TVs, it entered into a box, and there was boxification. And then what you said, there was the foxification of news, like Fox TV, everybody screaming at each other. And what I hear today is the need for detoxification of news. So thank you all of you for bringing that to light. I will now ask uh, Mr. Venki Venkatesh, 
who is uh, heading the Press Trust of India, to say a few words. Good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's a great ho honor to be here amongst uh, people like you today. And my compliments to Women Economic Forum for creating this stage where there is a lot of exchange of thoughts, creativity, and knowledge. And I was also told that I need to speak about uh, my career. So I'm going to do a bit of a twist. And I'm going to talk about the journey. And I'm also going to talk about the pillar of my strength in this journey. In our career, in my career, as I kept on going, we moved 14 homes and we lived in six cities. Now just imagine shifting from one home to another home, pack, unpack, settle down. And imagine doing it in 14 different homes. And that's where my pillar of strength, my wife, Asha, who is here, uh, partnered me in this journey. And my children also had to move from a city to city. And it meant CBSC to ICSC to ICSC to CBSC. This kind of chain needs a lot of uh, strength and helping hand, and she was there for us. So uh, all this happened through the three decades of my, my career uh, in Hindustan Unilever, Hindustan Times, and now in PTI. You see, in all of this, uh, the reason why I've taken this example is a homemaker is always an unsung hero, and in this case, should I say unsung heroine. And, and, and to be a good homemaker, it requires a lot of management skills, I, I can promise you that. It requires creativity, it requires care, it requires empathy, it requires leadership. Imagine the kind of management pressures that the husbands will put on the wife. And those pressures are very different and the wife has to, has to handle this. And think of the IR problems the children will create. So it's one thing to handle an IR problem in a job situation. It's a different thing to handle an IR problem at home. So hats off to all those homemakers who have made careers of lot many people. Uh, it is not a cliched statement when you say that behind a successful man, there is always a very strong lady. And I think it is true. And I'm absolutely sure in my case it is true. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Habin, for considering me for this award and best wishes for such good work in the future. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Venkatesh. I have two last speakers on this panel. And since we always say ladies first, I'm not going to have the lady last. So I'm going to now ask uh, the wonderful Raji, who is the director and CEO of PTC Network, who spent many years in the Punjabi television industry and is the only women in the top ranks in the Punjabi TV industry. Raji, please. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I feel honored and delighted to be here with so many media veterans and leaders. I would like to take this opportunity to thank Dr. Harbin for having me here. It's been a, a long time that we've been noticing that women have been successful over a period of time and they've made it big, whether it's business, politics, social media, television, and so on. And I congratulate all the women for their respective achievements. I was told to share a few things about my journey. It's been quite interesting and challenging, starting from launching the first ever Punjabi channel way back in 1998. It was called the Punjabi World. I moved on to ETC Punjabi, launching that in June 2000. And then Z took over, and I was very fortunate to run two competitive channels, ETC Punjabi and C Punjabi. At that point of time, taking a decision on what the profile of the Punjabi channel would be with so many leading national channels was a little tough, because Punjabis invariably, they watch Indian television, Hindi media as well. 
So making a profile of the channel was a little difficult and, and at that point of time being passionate about Punjabi music, Punjabi television in terms of language because I came from Punjab, Chandigarh. I thought giving a platform to Punjabi music industry was something which I really, really wanted to do. And then ETC Punjabi when it was launched we were very happy that within a year we were in profits at that point of time. Z took over and I was fortunate enough to look after the other channel which was Z Punjabi. And then PTC happened in 2007 which was nine years back. PTC network comprises of PTC News, PTC Punjabi and PTC Chakde. And I'm very fortunate uh, to share this with you all that in today's time, PTC Punjabi is viewed all across and available all across the world. If you go to, we wanted this, that was our dream that every Punjabi household should be able to view Gurbani wherever, however they are in across the globe. So today, PTC Punjabi being a regional Punjabi language channel is available in UK, Europe, US, Canada, all across the globe. So I'm very fortunate and I thank all my viewers for it, that they, they love the channel and they watch it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Raji. I must tell you that uh, PTC is the first channel that is switched on in my house at 3.30 a.m. in the morning because you cover, uh, you know, Harmandir Sahib. I'm born into a Sikh family. So those are the voices I hear early in the morning in in, in, in Brahma Mahurat. So there you go. Uh, our last but not the least speaker is a veteran in the journalism, in journalism uh, for 40 years and past president of the Editors Guild of India, amongst other things. Without much ado, Alokji. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Arora and Rai family, I should say. And especially I want to give my greetings to Women Economic Forum. In fact, I'm not supposed to come here. Uh, my friend here sitting, Mansi, uh, she's from TV, she's from digital media. So after 40 years also, I think I'm a still trainee. I want to learn a lot for digital media because in India we are going through in a different era of journalism. When we started, it was teleprinter, it was typewriter, handwritten. Still, person like me still prefer to write by my pen instead of on computer. But even then, we have to work also on computer. We have to go also on the television. Mr. Amit Goel, our friend, was sitting here. So we were just talking before this session that now we should work in different field, print, television, and digital. Maybe after some time, people will read only on mobile. But it's still what I feel, because I belong to a Hindi language media. I edited most of the Hindi newspapers, magazines from Hindustan, Navarat Times, Outlook Hindi, Naidudia, a number of newspapers I've heard there. So I feel that it's still what our friend was talking about here, that in India we have a large number of Hindi readers, the Indian language readers are also there. So television, what we think, that only dominated by this discussion where we go there for discussions and just blah, 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 and politicians are speaking there. But the real India is out of Delhi, Mumbai, and Calcutta. Even Women uh, Economic Forum also, they organize some conferences out Delhi also. So I think even the rural area is still 60%. Mr. Khan was also talking more than one lakh publications in, when I, in India. So you can imagine that large number of people who live in rural area, we need more education more health awareness, what Baba Ramdev was talking here. So I think our friend like Mansi, who is running Teen News for Young Generation, she worked for television producing 
but she's behind the curtain like producer and director and especially the economic power they work behind the scene you see now anurag batra is also just sitting outside here somewhere he was called to come here on the dais but instead of coming here he was talking behind the scene so the number of people working behind the scene and we all work for those people who are working in field in rural area in cities and especially for women what i feel for media we have a great responsibility all over the world not only in india in africa and europe i know i worked in germany also in deutsche welle for 3 years and i feel that is still all over the world we need more women power in the media also in, in uh, we have seen barkhadat now she is not here but still there are people shobhna bhartia in hindustan times mrunal pandey was also writer so you don't feel that uh, nowadays number of people coming from uh, in the media in business also so i think our guests from outside the india they should also feel that in india there are lot of prospects when star tv started here in india sadar tre was the first ceo he was also from times of india group when we were working together so now you see how star is popular or how is strong, strong in india so maybe in future you ladies who came from outside india the day will come you will also come here as an entrepreneur we have a scope for indian media you should invest in digital media you should invest in television for education for health this the prospects for women in india is large and we i think we should work together and this kind of forum ultimately is going to help society make digital india make a strong india make more friendship all over the world we need more friendship peace and prosperity thank you very much thank you so much alok ji with that we come to the close of this session it is said that journalism is a way in which a society has a conversation with itself i would like to thank each and every one on this panel for helping us all have a conversation with ourselves and a conversation with the media thank you very much we will now do the award ceremony i request mansi to please lead it thank you so much arbin and thank you so much our awardees for the evening It's my pleasure to announce our very first awardee, Mr. Amit Goyal, as we honor him with the Leader of the Decade in Media and Social Change. Ladies and gentlemen, please give him a warm round of applause. Going for Anita Nair as a Woman of the Decade in Media and Strategic Communication. Let's keep clapping here now. Our next awardee, Select Bill, as a woman of the decade in media and social change. We'd like to honor Dragana as a woman of the decade in social media and leadership. Put your hands together for Dragon Out. We'd like to honor Erica McKelson as a woman of the decade in media and social change. Raji M Shinde Congratulations Raji you are the woman of the decade in media and social change Calling on Carol Sharma Congratulations ma'am as a woman of the decade in social media in media We'd like
like to honor Mr. S.M. Khan as a leader of the decade in media. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give Mr. Khan a warm round of applause. Calling on Seema Goswami. Congratulations, Seema. You are the woman of the decade in media and social change. We'd like to honor Mr. Wenki Venkatesh as a leader of the decade in media and social change. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together. Padmashri, Mr. Alok Mehta. Congratulations, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please step up for a group photo of this epic moment? <laughs> Don't go away anywhere. The last session is with Krishika Lula, the woman entrepreneur at the helm, helm of the family business of Eros International, which is the largest producer of films in India. Last session of the day, ladies and gentlemen, please stay around.
Ladies and gentlemen, hold on to your seats. We have with us Miss Krishika Lula, the glamorous, illustrious Indian film producer. gentlemen put your hands together for the ever charming and ever lovely Miss Lula. Well yesterday we had a session with an actor from the Hindi film industry, lovingly called as Bollywood with some like and some dud. Doesn't matter, it's here to stay. Uh, Krishika, you are a woman film producer. Your family's been into the business for a very long time. You are a Ross International, the largest producer of films in India. How does it feel to be a woman at the helm of the largest production company in India? A very good evening to everyone present here. I feel with willpower and determination, you can succeed anywhere, whatever you want to. I always followed my dreams and my courage, being fearless, all this did, um, I realized when I had to face and I'm here because of that. Uh, and I would say I would give all my credit to my team, whoever is working with Eros International, who has been like, a, like thick and thin with me and supported me all the way. I was thinking maybe we should switch mics. My match is with red and your match is with green. Would, that, would you like that? Okay. Why not? <laughs> Thank you. So, we already talk about the Indian film industry as the largest, right? And yet, you're expanding. You're foraying into regional cinema. India has a wealth of regional languages. And you are getting into a space to have a, a vibrant regional cinema in each of the states of India or in each of the linguistic regions of India. Uh, what do you, you know, there seems to be a great appetite for entertainment, for the cinematic experience. Uh, would you like to share a little about that? Yes, of course. Uh, because Bolly, uh, Eros is always known for uh, making Bollywood movies. So we thought of venturing into regional cinemas. So we did two Marathi films. We backed two film, Marathi films called Funthru, which was a sci-fi uh, romantic love story. It's very different and never ever uh, uh, touched, even in Bollywood, such kind of subject. And we did uh, Anzara Hatke, which is also a beautiful story, which touches a human relationship. So it was a good experience to try uh, to venture into Marathi cinema too. We've, uh, following up with uh, maybe Kannada, Bengali we are just uh, releasing called Posto. So it's, it's a good experience because each religion at each con con little country gives you a different feel which makes you more aware of what is going on in you know, all each state. Well, we're all very curious and we would like to know, being, uh, uh, you know, heading such a busy uh, production house, such a large production house, what is your typical day? My typical day? Uh, just for me is, I would be saying that my typical day, the day I hear a good script, it gives me a lot of high and um, 
as a, as we all are women we face a lot of multifarious work so the chores we got to do i like the way i manage myself sometimes it's difficult but sometimes uh, i enjoy it too uh, you know i was listening to one of the uh, interviews of nicole kidman she had come to india and uh, somebody asked a question about hollywood versus bollywood and uh, asked her that when do you think bollywood will become like hollywood um and i think he meant it in terms of technique and style and quality i don't know but he just said when will hollywood become what bo when will bollywood become like hollywood and she said a very beautiful thing she said would you want to and i thought that was so beautiful saying that hindi film cinema has its own identity our songs our dances our unique way of of entertaining people uh, it's so unique to our culture and uh, is there is there something you see that there's now a convergence there are a lot of international studios that are coming into um, into india uh, making indian content indian indian movies but a lot of people from abroad coming here as well bringing their own technology writing we were talking about raj nayak from colors was here the other day he was talking about the dearth of writers new writing uh, so do you think as people from abroad foreign studios come into it they bring their own technique they bring their own vision is there going to be some change that we see as an influence from hollywood into what we know as bollywood or do you think that Hindi film cinema is already going through its own evolution its own changes we now have small budget movies for instance we have a movie like pink for instance which is openly talking about when a woman says no you stop i mean things like that there's a organically an evolution in hindi cinema so where do you see this going do you see us influencing hollywood or hollywood influencing us or a mix of both uh i would truly say hollywood is influenced by bollywood i say because uh, one small example we are doing very well bahubali yes. is done is going to do more than 1000 crores so that shows it all that we are there of course there are a lot of subjects if you see japanese film if you see different korean film they all have bollywood touch the emotions because emotions are the same whether it's hollywood or bollywood i think uh, there's no comparison they think differently and if we think that kind of way i don't think so uh, a bollywood would accept such kind of films i mean the indian uh, audience i meant so i feel we have our own stake and where we are and we show the innocence we show emotions we show the grounded version what we all are from beneath so my take is obviously bollywood hollywood is following bollywood um, do you think the film industry is um, a male dominated or a male determined industry or you think It's women are coming and playing their parts such as yourself you are very much part of decision making so do you think that's a rarity or do you think that's more and more women are taking interest and and stepping into decision making roles of course uh, it's a man's world i would say still but uh, in few places of course their leadership is still existing and if you go to see we have all technicians to our directors to producers which i don't think so earlier they thought that a woman would uh face the in, in, intricacies of uh, film production where i am today it was a difficult task uh, i would say nothing come uh, free in life so you have to work we all have to face obstacles with a pinch of salt so why not uh, in this field i think uh, earlier i thought that you know a woman has a, a little limit but uh, even if you go to see in uh, like dangal they showed that how women you know whether it's uh, strength or it whether it's uh, by yeah, 
Zoya Akhtar did a very good, uh, she was a very good director, her field. So there are different fields, we all are coming and it's just that our vision is very different and we can uh, mix between um, how, what a man can handle only one thing, a woman can handle multifarious things, they can handle the, uh, we deal with different kind of people each day. So. Uh, that's how like you know versions of employees or you know talking to people so even that matters so we know how to balance ourselves and work through it there's a recent trend a phenomenon of uh, stars uh, especially women actresses from India who are moving into the West into Hollywood so to say there is Priyanka Chopra who's got Quantico in the US and it's you know doing very well uh, there is uh, there's Deepa pa Deepika Padukone who's moving into Hollywood so and, and there is a sort of you know demand as well uh, from the West of Indian actors Indian actresses uh, to come and star in with a be it Baywatch for uh, Priyanka Chopra or you know other things what do you think is driving this you know why is this sudden surge it's not that we didn't have talent before no I would say we have talent that's the reason that Hollywood has searched and culled the right people they know that you see Irfan Khan, there are many other uh, pe people they are trying to cull from Bollywood because uh, they've seen the talent in them and we are very proud, they made us proud whether it's Priyanka, whether it's Deepika, they made us all proud that uh, Hollywood people are recognizing our talent much more and they would love to see an uh, Indian uh, ho actor to be in one of, in, be a part of their film so I think it's, um, we are not asking them to come, we seldom see any uh, Hollywood actors in Bollywood cinema because they don't really fit into it unless it's just a cameo or something. And I'm very happy that uh, Hollywood has uh, culled the best uh, actors. Priyanka, Deepika, Irfan, there are many other, uh, Ali Fazal has done. So many more, they, are, they have been inviting many more actors to come and join them. Uh, do you think Indian directors will end up going that way too? We've got Shekhar Kapoor who did that with Elizabeth. Uh, do you think uh, this trend is going to, uh, first the actors of course, it's going to start up and then do you think some of our good directors uh, are going to also be in that sort of a space? There are some directors who have uh, ventured first there and then they have come here. Like my Marathi director, he's a National Award winner. He started his career in LA and now he's doing his, uh, now he's doing Marathi films. So uh, vice versa, direction is creativity. Creativity can go to any extent, whether it's Hollywood or Bollywood. It's just that it has to work, the content has to work and they should understand the culture, what kind of culture these Hollywood is looking for or Bollywood is looking for. Uh, so it depends and that's how I think they'll be successful. Uh, India, uh, you know, Indian diaspora is everywhere and they all wait for the next Indian movie coming out. It's a big connection, an emotional connection with back home right so how much of the Indian diaspora let's say expectation of the box office collection or content what kind they would like or locations what they would like to see given their sensibilities that they live abroad how much of the diaspora thinking how much do you think of the Indian diaspora in terms of finances the economics part of it in terms of content you know what they would like uh, w when you get into deciding what should go into the making of a movie? Is it an important element that you consider? Of course, it's the, it's the most important element. First is the content. I feel my hero is always the content, not the actors first. Now, if my content is good, the actors will follow. And especially, and then the director, first the content. Second is my director who can understand the vision of the content and believe in the vision of the content. 
So I would say uh, uh, after that is budget. Even budget is very important. You can't spend more than what is required because if you do that just to show the fl flamboying and the you know scenic kind of picture is when it's needed we need to show or not just forcefully uh, add the budget to it because at the end we are looking at the box office collection all the hard work shows but it has to be appreciated with the box office connected so think wisely the content tells you everything whether you would like to see uh, the film even the trailer can tell you because then that's how we will, you know everybody looks into it if you, whether it's hollywood hollywood you would just see the we don't know the actors in hollywood uh, we know only the actors in bollywood and they're more recognized so when you see a, a hollywood film you you see the trailer and you decide you want to go so we are heading there and to say that the content works perfectly if you know we would like to watch it or we do not like to watch it uh, krishika what would be your message to women um, women entrepreneurs women leaders women in business and a lot of women in the media um, in the film world elsewhere as well who would look up to you and uh, want to do something what what would you, your message to them be for me it started with a thought which has culminated into a beautiful dream for me this that uh, earlier i was a very shy and a very introvert struggling woman i would see in my yesterday's years and today i see myself that i have overcome my car my fear i've been very persistent i've been very patient which is um very very important in this field because you lose your patience so many times and that's that's where you stop going ahead don't you think i wouldn't have heard a no from an actor or a director since even though i'm coming from a film background it was maybe my company but i had to earn my way my path i've heard a no from an actor i've heard a no from a director but doesn't mean that i i stopped dreaming i went ahead i still went ahead and i'm here i'm very successful right now i'm being very proud to say that because people recognize me and i enjoy that because it has been a struggle everybody has to go through that and enjoy the struggle that i feel i'm still struggling the day my struggle ends i feel i have not achieved my achievements will be stopped i think let the struggle go on and i will i need to do a lot more than i am today thank you so much uh, how do you as a production house because not every film is a box office hit it's a very uncertain terrain you just there's no formula you don't know what works a star may work a star may not work a good story may work it may not work you just never know what clicks a high budget may work or a low budget may work it, you just don't know how do you process the losses that you as a production company uh, go through the misses the hits of course uh, maybe they make up for the losses i don't know so how do you process the losses or films that don't do well at the box office financially it's a process it's uh, as you said it's it's like a circle some movies work some movies don't work exactly we don't know the formula at all if one would know the formula i think we would just have hits and hits so uh, we don't know you know it's i feel it's just a mood people would love to see sometimes they are in a mood to see something very drama and love story and sometimes you, they would like to see any kind of cinema so i feel mood swings nobody can come to know of a person nor of the vision of the people they would like to see the audience would want to see at that time so sometimes if if a love story is working i think 10 love stories come off so it's like a cycle so it's just like we need to believe in the content what we are doing just go with it and i feel if you know if you can connect with with the with 
the audience a little bit, I feel somewhere you're going on the right path. Whatever films I've done in my past, I've always tried to connect with the people. Maybe it's NH10, like, you know, for me that thought started, like, we read in the newspapers so many uh, tragedy which goes on. And when we read uh, for a minute, we feel so sad, sorry about it. And then we uh, turn our page and then we see some nice interview and we laugh it out. We've forgotten what we just saw a minute back. It's just, it's just gone. So, uh, thought of making NH10, which is actually happening in parts of Delhi. I think we all know about it. So, seeing the vision and uh, when, uh, when I uh, came out of the cinema, a lot of people I met, they had so many stories to tell me saying that, okay, this did happen the other day with us and it happened with uh, the following person or the other. So it connected to people so well and they had that vision with them. It stayed a longer time than reading in the newspaper. So it's the way you connect to people. If you, if you, ha if you connect to the audience a little bit, I think we, uh, that's the way the, we need to hit and direct our visions. Uh, do you spend yourself uh, some time uh, on social media? We all like to do. I like to do at my ease and why not? As a woman... Uh, sorry, uh, a my, I'll rephrase my question. Um, as, you know, being in the production, you just mentioned about keeping a pulse on the audience because yeah. it's very interesting what you said about that it all depends on sometimes the mood of people, which is very new. I haven't heard this before. And it's a very interesting insight that it's actually, you know, f a film may or may not work because, you know, of the mood of the people. They yeah, would, of course. You know, I, for a small so example, I might would, give you yes, an example. Yes, yes. Uh, today, you're sitting at home and you're feeling like, okay, lethargic and you don't feel like going out and don't want to party. So you go through the uh, cinema, you see the trailers of the cinema, of the film. And here you have a comedy, here you have a, 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 a nice horror film, here you have, like you have variety for you. So what would you pick? Depends on your mood, exactly. So that's what I was trying to say. It depends on the mood, what people want to see at that time. Sometimes you really want to see something, but I feel mostly the entertainment kind of film does work. Very serious kind of cinema is very less, according to me, because we all have problems at home. We would love to go and laugh and come sometimes, and I feel always, not sometimes. So it depends on the mood, am I right? Absolutely, so what my meant was that to like you said, if we could find a way to stay connected, you know, to the people, what they are looking for, what is the sentiment. And today, social media and Eros has ventured a lot into Eros now as well. There's a digital presence that you are having. Uh, the world is becoming digital, so that is an additional screen one has to take into account. So do you use um, this connection with social media, do you think it helps uh, to sort of figure out, keep an ear on the ground and say, what's happening? Does it sort of help into your decision making and keeping a connection with the mood of the people or, you know, what's happening? As you said, this is a very difficult formula. You cannot, you cannot take, uh, you cannot, you cannot know the, or the pulse of the audience yet. We don't know the formula. It's just that we need to go with our guts and the content. Ki, okay, we, let's, let's change the mood of the people. Let's give them this entertainment. Let's give them different kind of vision. Let gives them something which they have not seen or something what they know and it's, uh, they have gone through in their earlier yesterday years or they would love to see the love story. Okay, have we met that? Some connection. So it, just enjoy doing that, you know, very grounded kind and somewhere in our dreams we have that okay you know everybody especially in love story we all want our lover boy to be very like always want to love you the way you had the vision maybe you don't get the same so you, at least you like to see in your dreams and dreams are entertainment for you um, as it's a family business you know, there are other members of the family who would be taking care of certain aspects of the business. And are there certain aspects that 
women would contribute more to? I don't know, maybe the creative aspects or content, or uh, is it it is stereotyped around gender? You know, uh, certain aspects that you would take care because you're a woman, and certain aspects that men would take care in the family because they're men, or you cross lines and you know you take care of each other's areas as well. How does it work? Uh, it's nothing like that. It's the way if I. Uh, always wanted my husband to take care, take care of the financial part, keep budget, just give me, I take the story to him. I give, I said, this is what the budget is. So he gives me a round figure, okay, this is the budget, you want to work on this, you can do it, not exceeding. So I would give him the part to do that. And uh, there's no such thing, there's gender difference and uh, discrimination because uh, my, CEO is a, uh, is a woman, my, uh, my P PR marketing head is a woman, my, uh, mark uh, this one, the PR head, the marketing head, and we have so many of the uh, young talent wo uh, with us. So I enjoy uh, working with them. It's, um, we have, we, you know, we exchange a lot together. All I can say is I'm very proud that the largest film production company in India has its helm in the production, in the family business part of it, a woman, and it's running marketing part of it as your CEO, like you said, also a woman and so many other women. With that, I think we'll come to the close of a one-to-one -one with Krishika Lula. And since she's here, if the audience would have any question here to ask her, I'm sure Krishika would love to take that. Alka, would you have a question? Stand up Thank you so much for being here. I'm Thank staying you. in Washington, D.C. And when Harbin said, you actually took my question and comment right out of my mouth. We're so honored to have our girls like Priyanka and Deepika come over, and they are doing such a fantastic job. Do you feel, and, and please be honest, right? do you feel that the women, the female actresses that we have in the States, can you see them translating just as seamlessly into Indian films? It all depends on the content because in, they need to speak our language very influent, like fluently. So if they can manage, maybe the Indian audience will accept them. But if they need a foreigner, there are many other, there are many uh, foreign actors, but they come in the role, the, it, it all depends on the content. If the de content demands a foreigner, a, you know, non-Indian uh, speaking woman, so uh, there would be a space for them. Otherwise, it's difficult. Right. And that's what I was feeling, that the translation might not happen as well, but the where I was coming from is that the style in which I feel our Indian actresses are able to deliver and you know I mean I reside over there but the way we are able to translate beyond language it is just it's something brilliant to watch so I was just curious from your point of view thank you thank you is there any other question Okay, with that we come to the close of a wonderful session with Krishika Lula uh, from Eros International and we are most delighted uh, to have her here speak on the media from her heart. It's very refreshing Krishika. Thank you so much for being here and we would love to honor you from thank the Women Economic Forum. Would you like to say a few closing words? Now, as I say, thank you all of you to be here and to listen to me. Thank you so much. I now request Mansi. It's our absolute delight to present to Krishna the All Ladies League and Women Economic Forum 2017 Award of Women of the Decade in Family Business and Entrepreneurship. Thank you, Krishna.